the title of today's class God's compassion God's compassion you open up at 1 Samuel chapter 23 verse 1 to 29 1 Samuel chapter 23 verse 1 to 29 1 Samuel 23 and 1 then they told David saying behold the Philistines fight against Keilah and they rub the threshing floors Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Kilia. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we come to Kilia against the armies of the Philistines, because they have massive, massive armies? Then David inquired of the Lord yet again. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Kilia. For I will deliver the Philistines into thine hand. The most I say, I will deliver them into your hand, your enemies into your hand. So David and his men went to Keilah and fought with the Philistines. And with, so David had what? Faith in the Most High. You see, the Most High said, You go, you don't worry. Go. I got this. I got your back. Go. And brought away their cattle. So David what? Fought with the Philistines and brought away the cattle. And smote them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Keilah. You see that? And it came to pass. That's how you take out Goliath. He said, uh, and it came to pass when Abiata, the son of Abimelech, sorry, when Ab Abiata, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David, to Keilah, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. So he came with an ephod. <laughs> so he came with, he had the ephod when he came to meet, meet David. And it was told Saul that David was come to Keilah. And Saul said, God had delivered him into mine hand. You see that? So the most I tell David, go and smite them. But Saul said, what? He, he he come because Saul was hunting him. <laughs> he said, "What? Go deliver him to my hand." He said, "Come close to me now. I'll kill him now. I'll get a chance to kill him." But the Moses is with David. Saul was still king, yeah. But the Moses is with David. The spirit he take the spirit from Saul. He put an evil spirit on him, and he's with David. He's being compassionate to David. He said, "Go." And Saul said, "Go to deliver him into my hand." He said, "Look, now I'll kill him." For he is shut in. He said, "No, I have him cornered." By entering into a tongue that had gates and bars. You see that? Now we, we, we have been cornered. <laughs> he cornered in that tongue. And Saul called all the people together to war. To go down to Keilah. To besiege David and his men. You see that? So most I said, David, you go and take them out. Take out them Philistines. Saul said, okay, we will kill him now. He said, what? He's defending his nation. And Saul want to kill him. His own brethren want to kill him now. You see that? Because the most I put the evil spirit on him. Um, you see what? Verse 9, and David knew that Saul secretly secretly practiced mischief against him. So, so David knew because the Mosai is revealing everything to him. And he said to Abiathar, the priest, bring hither the ephod. He said, Abiathar, give me the ephod. Then said David, O Lord, God of Israel. So he took the ephod from Abiathar and he started to pray to the Mosai. He said, Mosai God, he's praying to him. O God of Israel, thy servant had certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah, to destroy the city for my sake. He said, what? I understand that Saul coming to kill me, to destroy the city, from because I hear. Will the, verse 11, will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? So David asking the Mosai, will they hand me over or will they defend me? <laughs> That's what he asking the Mosai. Will Saul come down as thy servant had heard? He said, will Saul really come in truth? As I understand. O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. David said, reveal it unto me, Mosai. And the Lord said, he will come. The Mosai answered him. He said, what? He will come. He said, he will come. Yeah. He said, that's a, a, a law of Absalom to come against him. You pay attention. When he became king, he said, what? He will come. Then said David, will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? So he asked him. And the Lord said, they will deliver you up. He said, yes, Saul will come and they will hand you over. <laughs> so what? Verse 13. Then David and his men, which were about 600, arose and departed out of Keilah. So he, was, he had six, what? Six, 600 men taken out of the Philistine, a master Philistine army. Because that is spirit of God in them. And went with a server they could go. So they left. <laughs> he take them out and he leave and they go on. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah. And he forbade to go forth. So Saul said, oh, it don't make, don't make sense going in. You know, he gone. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds. And remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day. And God delivered him not into his hand. Who the most size protecting David from King Saul. Saul is the king. But isn't the, the most I supposed to deliver the, anybody against, against the king into the king's hand? No, because the most I pulled the spirit already from Saul. The most I say what? The most I delivered him not into his hand. 
And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood, so he was hiding for his life from him. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. Saul's own son, who was supposed to be the heir following Saul, he, he, what? he went to David, who Saul is trying to kill, trying to put him to death. Jonathan went to him secretly and said, What's sent to David? And strengthen his hand. He said, Strengthen his hand in God. He said, The most I, the most I with you. He's telling him, because he understands, the most I say is prayer to stay with them. He said, The most I with you. And Jonathan understood, understood this thing from young. <laughs> and he said unto him, Fear not. Jonathan, the son of Saul, tell David, Don't fear. Because why? For the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find thee. He said, He will not find you. And thou shalt be king over Israel. Saul's son, who is supposed to be the heir, he's a prince. He said, David, you're going to be king over Israel. He said, my father ain't killing you. <laughs> and I shall be next unto thee. I go be your, after you. I go be your right hand. He said, you go be the next king, I go be your right hand. He's already absconded the throne. He understands the spirit of the Lord is with him. He said, who's this young boy come and take out Goliath? Who's this young boy come and slay them Philistines that my father can't take out? He said, and he come again. He said, no, the mo most I God had to be with him. So you see what? You go be the king. So it's always the spirit that the Most High had and, and, and um, Jonathan was always protective of David. Verse 18, And the two made a covenant before the Lord, and David abode in the woods. So Jonathan and David made a covenant before the Most High. And Jonathan went to his house. Jonathan said, I go be, You will be king. I be, I in line with you. I with you. That's what he's saying. I with you. Then came up the Ziphites Ziphrit, to Saul. Sorry. Then came up the Ziphites to Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself? With us in a strongholds in the woods, so he, he was hiding with this the fight, and they come on. They come and tell us where he is. You see that? This is where he is. He hiding with me. <laughs> in the hill of Hashia, which is in the south of Jerusalem, sorry, of Jeshimon. So he tell they tell Saul where he is. He hiding with among me. Now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of thy soul to come down. And our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hand. They say, We don't you you come. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> deliver him to you. He will tell you where he is. And Saul said, Blessed be ye the Lord. You see that Saul say what? Bless the Most High. <laughs> Blessed be the Most High, for you have compassion on me. Saul say what? The Most High, you have compassion on me, because you deliver him in my hand. You see that they come and tell me where he is. They come and tell me where he is. I'm going to go, I'm going to go get him. Keep reading. Verse, 20, verse 22. Go, I pray you, prepare yet, and know, and see his place where he is, where his haunt is. You see that Saul say? Go and find out exactly where he nest is, where he hiding on the lair. And who had seen him there? For it is told me that he delayed very subtly. So I'll say they tell me he's very crafty. He's he shifting, he shifted from here, he shifted from there. He changed the place. And so go and tell me exactly precisely where he is. See therefore and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hideth himself. Find out all the hiding places. <laughs> we say all. He ain't escaping me this time. He's not gonna escape this time. So so say what? Because God has compassion on me. Let's keep reading. And come ye again to me with the certainty. Go and tell me exactly where he is pinpointing. And I will go with you. And it shall come to pass, if you be in the land, that I will search him out throughout all the thousands of Judah. He said, I'm going to find him. <laughs> Once he give me an idea where he is, he said, I'm going to find him. And they rose and went to Ziph before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon, in the plain on the south of Jeshimon. Saul also and his men went to seek him. And they told David, wherefore, they, they, they told David, Wherefore he came down into a rock. So they went and tell David, you see that? Saul looking fear. You see, Saul looking hunting him. And they told David, Wherefore he came down into a rock and abode. So David flee again. And, and abode in the wilderness of Maon. He went in the foot in the wilderness. And when Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon. And Saul went in on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. So there was on the opposite side. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul. For Saul and his men come past David and his men round about to take them. See that? So they, 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 they encircle them. So David said, how are we escaping them now? He tried to escape. Trying to so encircle them. But there came a messenger unto Saul. So when he cornered him now, what happened? Because Saul, so Saul said, Most have compassion on me. It, what happened? He cornered him now. He said what? But there came a messenger unto Saul saying, Somebody come with Saul. Bring in a message. Haste thee and come. Saul, come. Why? For the Philistines have invaded the land. You see what? The Philistines attacking home. <laughs> Come. You see that? So, is the Most High have compassion on him? You see? You see what? Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David and went against the Philistines. So he had to go back and defend, <laughs> defend his land. 
the homeland. So the most I do what? Pluck him away from me because that one is anointed now. You see, I anointed you so, but I take that from you. The spirit, the most I already shifted the spirit from Saul. Take him the Holy Spirit from him. But evil spirits on him. Let me see. Wherefore Saul returned from Pusin after David and went against the Philistines. Therefore, they, they called that place Selam, Selahama Lekot. And David went up from thence and dwelt in strongholds in Engadi. Eng so David, the most I delivered him out of your hand again. And go to Psalms chapter 86. Psalms 86, read 14 to 17. Psalms 86, 14 to 17. Psalms 86 and 14. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul, and have not set deep before them. You see that? So there's always persecuting him. Saul, Absalom, you see that Ahithophel, there was always his own brethren, was always coming against him. Verse 15. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion. David said, you are the most high full of compassion. So the compassion of the Lord was who? David, not Saul. Saul said what? God is compassion on me, have compassion on me. He tell me where David is, I won't kill him. And when he go and encircle him, the most I do what? Deliver David out of your hand. So the most David say what? But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion. So the most high's compassion is to what? Them that fear him. Them that I anoint. Them that I appoint. The prophets I send. The elect. This, no, no, you pay attention. I will protect them. But the Lord art a God of full of compassion and gracious, long suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. So he has compassion and what? Mercy. Compassion and mercy. Compassion is mercy. Merciful. In the attention. And truth. Continue reading. Fifth, 16. O turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of, of thine handmaid. Show, show me a token for good that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed because thou Lord has helped me and comforted me. So the most like compassion he will help you. You see what? Compassion is mercy and you will help. He give you help. When I'm compassionate to you, I will be merciful unto you and I will help you. Against those that what? Hate you. Now we say, they which hate me may see it. He said, Saul what? Saul had hatred towards him. Just enviousness because what? Saul killed a thousand and David killed ten thousand and he tripped from that. <laughs> David came and took out the Goliath. David killed, slew in Philistines left, right and center because the most I anointed him. That kid, he going to be the king. That me, that's going to be my anointed. What did Deuteronomy chapter 13? I read in verse 1 through 17. Deuteronomy 13 and 1 through 17. Deuteronomy 13 and 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign of the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. So you see, if any prophet come and tell you, let me go and serve other gods other than Mosai, means what? They're teaching you erroneous doctrines. They're teaching you perverted doctrines or perverted or false doctrines. What? Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. Don't listen to them. Flee from them, or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God prove it to you. That's why the Mosai said, trying to see what they're going to do, what I tell you to do in the Bible. If you're going to follow the instructions, the basic instruction before leaving earth, that's my father always tell me from a kid. He said, B I B L E, basic instruction before leaving earth. He always tell me, I was like, what are you talking about? And he said, well, bye bye, but basic instruction. That's his, 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 his thing. He said, basic instruction before leaving earth. He was telling me something heavy. And he said certain things to me like I never comprehend. He's always telling me certain things about me, certain things. And what? How does he know this? How do you know that? And he'd be beyond your, your comprehension. But I grew up seeing, seeing him what? In this book, morning, night. Morning before you go to work. When he come home from work, that's all he was doing, meditating in this thing, true, consistently. So, anyways, everybody thought he was wise. Why is this man in the, in, in the, in the neighborhood? Why is this wisdom? Keep reading, Deuteronomy thirteen and three. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of the prophet or the dream of Jean, for the Lord God proveth you. Whether you're going to keep the commandments, what's written in here? Whether you're going to do what my instructions inside here? Take my instruction to know whether you love the Lord. Your God, with all your heart and with all your soul. That's what most are going to prove you to send false prophets to deceive you behind, to see whether you're going what? Line song and right. That what he's saying, that ain't right in a line up with this book. That ain't a line up with the laws. That, no, that's, no, 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 that's fake. That's false. Run. <laughs> that we say. You shall walk after the Lord your God. Do what I commanded to do in, in this Bible. That we tell you, all these laws, the book of laws. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments, not doctrines of men. You see that? And obey his voice, which is the Lord's that his commandments, that is the voice of the Lord, and he shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death, because he had spoken to turn you away from the Lord, your God. The Moses said, I will kill that false prophet, a fake prophet. You need to pay attention. 
the objective is to turn you away from God, to destroy your soul, is of the devil. There is sin, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to trust you out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded you to walk in. The laws that his commandments he so he's trying to lead you out of the laws by pretending to teach in the Bible, have the Bible in your hand and, and deceiving the behind still. You need to pay attention. There's evil angels among you, there's evil spirits among you. Pay attention. Go am the soul. The most I put the evil spirit on his behind. You need to pay attention. First Samuel 16 and verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord, let me read from 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and, and anointed him in the midst of the brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. First Samuel 15 and 3. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not. But slay both man, woman, in front, suckling ox, sheep, ass, camel. Most I say, kill them. Kill them all. That would, what did Moses say in verse 23? For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an, as, as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he had also rejected thee from being king. Because the Moses said, he didn't carry my decree. He was to kill everything. I said, there's a reason behind it. There's the spirits. Moses I wanted to obliterate those spirits from the earth. It's evil spirits. <laughs> and he didn't, he didn't understand. He did, but he didn't follow orders. You see that? And Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord. You see that? And thy words. He said, I have transgressed what? Samuel, because Samuel is the man, the bridge between the Mosai and the king. He's the man of God. He said, I have transgressed the God commandment and your word, Samuel. But God said, deliver this to me. To him. Tell him I say this. Back to um, 1 Samuel 16 and 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And what? An evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Pay attention. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit leave you, or the good spirits, or the good angels, Evil angels take you behind. There we go. Angels of Satan. Evil spirit. Go back to um, Deuteronomy 14 and verse. Sorry, Deuteronomy 13 and verse 5. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. So that any prophet that's trying to lead you outside of what is written in this book is an evil angel or evil spirit. Or pay attention, or evil prophet or false prophet. That's most I said. That's the way you're going to put evil from you. Don't go to this that and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he had spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, and redeem you out of the house of bondage, to trust thee out of the way, which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. See that? That prophet should be put to death. That's what we're going to put because he's an evil spirit, an evil prophet, a false prophet, an evil angel. Pay attention. If thy brother put the most like proof need to see whether you can follow him. That's what he tells Saul, do this, go and kill. And Saul didn't follow him. He said to the evil angel, take it behind out. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, if your brother, you see that, your own physical bloodline of his, the son of your mother, or thy son, your own child, or thy daughter, your own son, or your own daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or your own wife, you see that, or thy friend, or your best friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee, secretly, do what? Entice each, or try to encourage you, see Come, let me go and join this false institution. Come, let me go and do some pagan worship. Come, let me go and do that. You see that? We go be one family. You see that? Then we family go be perfect. We got the perfect family. If they entice you secretly, that's what secret enticements because they're working with the spirit of Satan. The devil is upon them and they're trying to deceive you begin behind to turn you away from the Lord. <laughs> to turn you away from the Lord your God. Pay attention. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thy own soul, that, that friend who grew up with tight soul. You see that? Entice thee secretly. Try to ensnare Come And saying what? Let us go and serve other gods. Come and, for, come and join my, 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 my organization now. Come and join my group now. Come, do what? Which ain't keeping God's laws. Do what? Which thou hast not known. You see that? Because you know about the laws of God. The Bible says this. The Bible says that. And them, no, them ain't doing that. Them ain't teaching that. What? Nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, of the hidden, hidden gods. Pagan gods, pagan worship. You see that pagan Sunday worship, pagan Friday worship, pagan and some of them worshiping pagan Sabbath and them even them devils, you see that, who wake up still being wicked and evil. You see that pretending that they're about the truth, pretending they're about the laws of God, but they're still deceiving you. Bear in mind because evil angels, they're evil angels and evil spirits and false prophets. Pay attention. The most I say, do what the Bible says, stay in the book. <laughs> if it's not coming from in here, run from them. That's what he's saying. Run. Do not hacken. Keep, keep reading verse 7, Deuteronomy 13, 7. Namely of the gods of the people which are wronged about you, because they are heathen gods, pagan gods, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee. 
from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, any false pagan worship. You see what? Thou shalt not consent unto him, no hack unto him. Notice I say what? Don't listen to him, don't follow him, don't go. You see that? The inviting him come, don't go. You see what? Don't go. Neither shall thou pit so neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shall thou spare him, neither shall thou conceal him. Don't hide. You see to reveal him. Expose his behind. That we say. Go and expose them and give them warning. Warn, stay from that one. Run from him. That we saying what? But thou shalt surely kill him. That was the judgment back then. You can't kill nobody in this dispensation. You will go to go to you will go to prison. All you do what? What does Paul say? Second Corinthians six seventeen. What you have to do? Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Verse fourteen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? You see that law keepers with lawbreakers. And what communion had light with darkness? Proverbs six twenty three. The commandments of the lamp and the law is light. One to keep in the law and obey the law with darkness or sin. So Acts 17, 26, 26, darkness is, is um, iniquity and sin, an abomination according to God. You see that? So what fellowship have done? None. And what concord had Christ with Balaam? You are following Christ. The laws of God, keeping the laws of God, they are following the devil because they're professing that they know God, but they're in the midst of sin still. It's crafty counsel, still doing secret sin. You know, the, the still of the devil. False, false prophets. Evil angels, evil spirits still on them. That is the, of the devil to turn away from the Lord. You see what? There's no, you're unequally yoked. Get away from them. Now we see. And he that, or what part had he that believeth in the Britain and He that believeth, take it heed to the commandments of God. You're going to do the commandments. So that's 32 24. With what? An infiller. They don't believe if they're doing most of the commandments and still willfully breaking a few. They're still an infiller. They're still false prophets, evil angels, evil spirits, still of the devil. Still trying to turn away from the Lord. You see that? Pay attention. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? You are the temple of God because you were with him from the beginning. You are the elect. You're going to do them, Lord. Thus said the Lord. Hear for me. You see that? Without reservation. And what? They were in the midst of idols. You see that? They are still idolatry. Pretending to keep in most of the laws, 99%. And they're still willfully sinning. That. They're not accidental. Not out of sin or ignorance. Willfully. They knowingly still leading you behind to death and destruction. Because I want to keep my corporation going. I want to keep my business going. You pay attention. My business venture. Pay what he that believeth with an infidel, there's no uh, no 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 union, union. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For he had the temple of the living God, as God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The Moses said, I will be with you. You are my people. You're gonna do thus, said the Lord. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The most I say, they are unclean. They are the brethren, they look just like you. You see the, the son of you, the son of you. Your own womb, your daughter, your, your, your mother, you pay attention, your wife or your bosom, you see what? If they're going to entice you secretly to follow the God, run, get away from them, come out away from among them, and I will receive you. Otherwise, most I say, I'm not receiving you. You're in the midst of sin, just like them, in the midst of evil. They are unclean. They are unclean. That's what most I say. Go back to Deuteronomy 13. You see what? Verse 8. Thou shalt not consent unto them. Don't go with them. You see that? No hearkening unto them, neither shall I, I pity them, neither shall thou spare them, neither shall thou conceal them. Don't hide them, reveal them, get away from them, and expose them. That's what we're talking about. But thou shalt surely kill them, that's the judgment then. You can't kill nobody. God, what come out from among them and reveal who they are. That's what he said. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. You can't kill nobody and <laughs> you'll get put to prison. You just come out from among them, be separate. And that's what the most I say. And reveal them. And afterwards the hand of all the people. That was the judgment then. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he died. That was the judgment then. You can't stone nobody with stones. You will go to prison. That we say. Come out from among them and be separate. That's what the most I say. Under faith and grace. You can't break the law. You can't violate the law. You will go to the, go to prison and you cannot kill. That we say. You will die. You will get put to death. Um, it's going to break in the most command, bring, break in one of the most command, the ten commandments. Thou shalt not kill. And what? Verse 10. Deuteronomy 13 and 10. 10. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he died, because he had sought to trust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So his objective is to what? Keep you away from your God. Keep in the sin. Deal away to the devil. So you see what? Again, you cannot put nobody to death. <laughs> and all Israel shall hear and fear, and because what? Separate from them, come out from among them, and be separate and expose who they are, reveal who they are, according to um, 2 Corinthians 6 14 through 17, 6, 14, 17. And what? Then what? All Israel going to hear and fear. You see that? They're going to understand. Beware, you see that warning sign, run and what and do no more such wickedness in this as this among you. If thou shalt hear, say, if thou shalt hear, say in one of thy cities which the Lord thy God had given thee to dwell in, they are saying, Certain men, the children of Belial, who the children of Belial are gone out from among you, 
and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods. They are children of Belial. Anybody enticing the out of the laws of God, you see, or teaching you to break God's laws, you see, whether by overtly or covertly, you see what? They are children of Belial. You see that? Pay attention. Then shalt thou, you see that? Let us go and serve other gods which you have not known. Verse 14, Deuteronomy 13, 14. Then shalt thou inquire and make search and ask diligently, and behold, if it be truth, and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought among you, you find out, make inquisition, who is trying to lead the trend of Israel astray? The trend of God astray, what? Thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword. That was the judgment then. Destroy all of them. You see that who trying to lead the trend of Israel astray? Destroying it utterly. And all that is written therein, and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword. That's what he tell them with 4 Samuel 15 and 3. Take, take everything out because evil spirits, evil angels, are we telling you? Evil spirits there. And thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof, and shall burn with fire the city and all the spoil of every whit for the Lord thy God, and it shall be an heap forever. It shall not be built again. That's why he was mad with Samuel, with um, Saul in 1 Samuel 15 and 3. He said, destroy Amalek, kill suckling, babe, everything in there. Kill everything. There's a reason. It's a commandment. It's a law. <laughs> That's the law in Deuteronomy 14 and 18. Destroy everything. And he saved King Agag. And he said the best of the sheep to go and sacrifice to the most. I said, I don't want that. I tell it to burn everything. It's the law. So he violated the law. That's why he said, I have sinned. In Samuel 15, 24. That's why he tells Samuel, I have sinned. I have sinned against God and you have violated your word. Because he break that law. And they shall cleave not of the cursed thing to thine hand. Because it's cursed. So anyone leading you astray from following God, they are cursed. Evil as hell. That we say saying. They are cursed. Evil spirits. Evil angels. False prophets. That we say saying. Get away from them. What? And there shall cleave not of the cursed thing to thine hand, that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger and show thee mercy. That's what the most I go show you what? Mercy or compassion. When you obey what he tells you to do, when you obey his commandments, laws, statutes, and his directives, he's going to show you mercy and compassion. And have compassion upon thee. So mercy is what? Compassion. Compassion is what? Mercy. You see that? And multiply thee as he had sworn unto thy fathers. When thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep all his commandments which I command thee this day, to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord thy God. That's when the Most High will have compassion on you. Because compassion, the title of the cross, yes. The Most High says, when you obey what I tell you to do, my law, statutes, commandments, and judgment, then I will have compassion on you. Go to Second Chronicles 36. Second Chronicles chapter 36. Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 1. Then the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. Jehoaz was twenty and three years old when he began to reign, and when he reigned three months in Jerusalem, and the king of Egypt put him down at Jerusalem, and condemned the land in an hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And the king of Egypt made Eliakim his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem. So the king of Egypt put him to death, and turned his name to Jeho turned his name to Jehoiakim. And Necho took Jehoiah Jeho Jehoaz, his brother, and carried him to Egypt. And Joachim was twenty and five years old when he began to reign. And he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. You see that violating God's laws. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon. So he did what? Evil against the Mosai, and the Mosai did what? Send the heathen against him. Send Nebuchadnezzar against him. Go conquer him. Nebuchadnezzar also carried up the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon, and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim came and his abominations which he did, and that which was found in him, behold, they are written in the book of the, uh, the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. And Jehoiachin his and Jehoiachin, his son reigned in his stead. And Jehoiachin was eight years old when he began to reign. He was eight years old and he would be made him king. And he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem, and he did which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And when the year was expired, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord, and made Zedekiah, his brother, king over Judah and Jerusalem. So, Nebuchadnezzar appoint king. Pay attention. From the most I am not appointing kings over Israel, I come to what? A heathen <laughs> appointing kings over Israel. Pay attention. And Judah, Jerusalem, because they went into wickedness, sin. <laughs> Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. And humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. You see that? So he didn't humble himself, what? To Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from what? The mouth of the Lord. The most I speak to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, you going to tell him I say this. Jeremiah, you going to tell him I say that. You see that? That's a Samuel to Saul. Samuel, you going to tell Saul I say that. Samuel, you say, that's the most I don't, I'm not dealing with you directly. 
He said, and he did what he didn't humble himself, become full of pride. He said, and also he rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar. He do what he rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar. Big mistake. He must have said, put him to conquer behind, and he rebelled. Who had made him swear by God, but he stiffened his neck, and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen, and polluted the house of the Lord which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes, he sent prophets to them. The Moses said, go and give them warning for me. Go and give them warning for me. Tell them repent. Tell them forsake the sin. Tell them stop violating my laws. The Moses said, I always give warning before I bring destruction. That's what compassion? Yes, God's compassion. I always give you warning, forewarning before I do any, any, because I give a chance to repent, to change. Long suffering? The Moses said what? Because he had compassion on his people. Stop. And the Lord God of their fathers, verse 15 again, sent to them by his messengers. I'm going to send prophets to you. You see that? Rising up betimes times and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. That's why the Mosai sent warning. That's why the Mosai sent prophets to warn you. There's a false prophet. That's an evil prophet. That's an evil angel. Pay attention. He's a deceiver. He's working for the devil. The Mosai is going to say. That's exposed to there. Deuteronomy 17. You read it. False prophets are among you. You say, go and expose to them. The Mosai said, give a warning. Stop following them. Stop because I'm compassionate. I don't want to come and destroy your soul. I give him a chance to repent. And the Mosai said, I'll show compassion. But, but, but what did they do? Verse 16, 2 Chronicles 36, 16. But they mocked the messengers of God. They mocked the prophets, the true messengers of God, like, like who? The Samuel, the Jeremiah, the Isaiah, the Ezekiel, the Saul. You see, then the Saul, you were to Paul, Saul changed his name to Paul. When he repent, repented, you see that? Peter, Luke, Jude, they all came and what? Gave warning. Matthew, Mark, they all came. John, John the Baptist, John the Revelator, they all came and gave warning. James, they all came and gave warning. But they what? From the beginning, we see that Elijah, Elisha, they did what? But they mocked the messengers of God. They always mock them. Mock, mock, mock. And despise his word. They hate God's laws. Despise his word means what? They hate God's laws. And misuse his prophet. They put them to death. They put them to death. They beat. They, they, they pay attention. From the Old Testament right to the New Testament. There was what? Putting them to death. Beaten, slain. Beaten, slain. Because they hate God. Pay attention. They have evil spirits on them, and what I say, repent. I gave them a chance because they're compassionate. I don't want to come and kill so much. And what I say, come back to my laws. That's compassion. God's compassion. I'm compassionate. I'm long suffering, forbearing. He said, What? And they misuse his prophets, put some of them to death, beat some. You see that? Stripes and whatnot in the synagogues. Okay, put them out of the synagogues, put them out of the vanguard schools, put them out of the, the false institutions. But what? Until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people. So the most I will come right into your false institution and give you a warning. Pay attention. And you simple as that, you can't even understand. You didn't understand what happened to you. The most I say, well, I was right in, right in there giving you a warning. Pay attention. <laughs> and what? And you put them out. Put them out. Put you out. Put them out. You see that? Because they don't like what they hate God. They, what? they despise these words. They hate, the, they, they mock the messengers of God and despise his words. They hate God's laws. <laughs> you see that? Right in the midst of them. Moses said, where was Yahushua teaching? In the Pharisee synagogues every Sabbath. Where was the disciples teaching? In the Pharisee synagogues every Sabbath. Pay attention. They were right in there, giving them warning. And they were mocking them, despising them. They would hate the words. They hate God's laws. The words is the laws of God. They hate it. And they misuse this prophet. See that beat Paul. They beat, beat, they beat them. They, they kill James. They, yes, they kill John. They, 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 why? They misuse this prophet. <laughs> said, Pay attention. Zechariah, they put them to death. Pay attention. Until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. So the most I say I was compassionate, I gave them warning. He said here, right? He said I was giving what I was compassionate to them. Verse 15, and the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending them because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. I had compassion on them, but they do what? They kill them, they kill them and what? Until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people. The most I says only so long before me. It's only so long to be compassionate to have mercy. I give you time to repent. And what? Until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, the children of Israel, the Israelites, till there was no remedy. There's no way out. When the Mosai say, okay, enough, I'm pulling the plug, there's no remedy. Destruction, who will hear? Deliverance, who don't hear? Destruction. That's what he's saying. Therefore, he brought upon them the king of the Chaldeans. You see that? I'm <laughs> bringing Nebuchadnezzar against you. I'm bringing him against you, who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion upon young man or maiden. Old man or him that stooped for age, he gave them all into his hand. So who brought the Titus and Vespasian against the throne of Israel in 70 AD? Pay attention. The Mosai for the same thing, mocking the messengers of God, 
The same thing, they were, they were dead, warning and warning and warning. Nobody. Guess what? Same thing is going on now. The messengers of God are back. Warning, warning, warning. Each other is to repent. You own for your own salvation, for your own deliverance. You see that the most is compassionate are calling it back to the Lord because they're coming to bring destruction in this, this king, this sinful kingdom. Pay attention, but they what? They mock it. They mock it. They mock it. Therefore, what? The most I bring, I bring the destruction is going to come. The death. Who's coming now? They're not the king of Charlie, but the Hushra Mashiach is coming. Pay attention. <laughs> the son of the most high, pay attention. He's come back as a God. Are we saying? And had no compassion. Verse 17, therefore, therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldeans. Second Chronicles 36, 17. He bring the, and who slew the young men with the sword in the house of the, their sanctuary, and had no compassion upon young man or maiden, old man or him, and stooped for age. He and that stooped for age. He gave them all into his hand. So the most I say, I will be long suffering, I will be compassionate until I have enough. And then what? The, who, who that sword come in, go have no compassion. Pay attention. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and his princes, and all these brought into Babylon. You see that? So Moses said, what? A compassionate to those who hear me, who listen to me. And they burned the house of God and break down the wall of Jerusalem. Just as they did in 7080, same thing the Romans came and did. Pay attention for violation. And burnt all the palaces they have with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. So Babylon did it. And Rome did it. The fourth, first beast kingdom, fourth beast kingdom. Same thing. That's why we scattered now. And the most I say, sending the messengers to warn you. Repent, come back to my Lord because I'm about to what? Bring the bring the big boom on this earth. Pay attention. To purge this earth to deliver the elect. Who will repent and come back and keep my laws? And that's compassion. And them that had escaped from the sword carried thee away to Babylon. Who didn't die? To take, take captive. Where they were servants to him. So he went into servitude. What happened to the Romans in 780? Titus and Vespasian? Yes. Where are we now? In servitude to the Roman Empire, this fourth beast kingdom. This fourth beast kingdom. And his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. You see that? So it's only put until what? The Persia. I, I think use the Persians to take them down. Take them Babylon. You see, they're in captive, captivity. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until his the land had enjoyed the Sabbath. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept she kept Sabbath. So most I say, get them out of the last sin. I don't want more sin in my in my land. Most I say what? The land will be peaceful as long as each one is another. Most I say. Get out. Too much violation, sin, and vile lifestyle. Lascivious lifestyle. You see what? To fulfill three score and ten years, seventy years under Babylon. You see that? You have the, so every captivity is for a dispensation of time. It's for a appointed time. And then Moses is shutting it down. He says, nobody could prolong nothing. There's nothing going to prolong. When the time is up, the time is up. Now, verse 22. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be full, accomplished. The Lord stood up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth had the Lord God of heaven given me. So Moses, I say what? I deliver what? Everybody into Cyrus. I know. No, Cyrus is going to be my second beast kingdom. Pay attention. So I take it on Babylon after the 70 years, and Cyrus is going to be in the second beast kingdom to dominate. And he had charged me to build a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among who is there among you? All of his people, the Lord his God be with him and let him go up. So Cyrus say what well, this is what the most I really revealed to me. Term stipulation, Cyrus, send them back home. Is that when they take down Babylon, send them back home, let them go and build back the temple. Pay attention. Compassion? Yes. The most I say compassion that punish all of you for a while, but are still compassionate. Go back home. You see that? A hidden conquest still send all the back home. Because it's my doing, my compassion. Go to um, Deuteronomy chapter 31, read verse 14. Deuteronomy 31, read verse 14. 14 to 30. Deuteronomy 31, I read in 14 through 30. Deuteronomy 31 and 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach, that thou must die. Moses, you see, Moses, your you, you, you days coming. You're getting old in age. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud. And the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. So the Moses appeared to them, Joshua and Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. And these people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land. The Moses said, Moses, when you die, them Israelites, them children, they're going to go after other gods, false gods, heathen gods. They go what? Go a whoring after them. You see that? So Moses said, going to be a strange for me. Whether they go to be among them. And will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. The most I said they will violate my laws. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them. Stop. The most I say, wait, when you forsake the laws of the most I God, he will forsake you. That's what most I say. What? I'll get angry. 
and I, will be, and I will forsake them. I will take away their protection. And I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured. And many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, are not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us? So the most I say, what? I will compassionate to you once you obey me, once you obedient. Just as a parent, you obey your parents, the compassionate to you, they treat you right. Once you, once you go into rebellion, they treat you away, they won't give you the stiff arm. They won't treat you at a distance. Once you go into rebellion, they don't want to obey my, my, my house rules, they don't want to obey my house. Okay, we got a problem. And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which you shall have wrought. Most I say, I won't hide my face on them. In that, in that they are turned unto other gods. They're going into this idolatry. Now therefore, write ye this song for you and teach it to the children of Israel. Most I say, what? Joshua and Moses, Moses, write this song. Write, Moses, write this song and what? Teach them, children of Israel. This. Teach them. Put it in their mouth that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, that fruit with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxen fat, then they will turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. The most I say what? You get complacent. You see that? <laughs> You're living up the nice, the nice life, your best life. You're living it deliciously. And they just go, forget the most I say. See the most I say, you're going to forget me. Because I treated them nice. I compassionate to them. I giving them food. Food like what they want. They're getting food. They're getting meat. They're getting drink. They're getting everything. Nice. Because I, they keep my laws. I treat them nice and they'll get complacent. And they stop worshipping me. They stop sacrificing. They stop praying. The most I say, they're going to get complacent. They go on other heathens. And it shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness. The most I say, write that, write them laws in here, write them, write them prophecies. So they're going to remember. That's what the, the book of remembrance. Pay attention. The most I say, well, cool. Write it for them. For it shall not be forgotten out of the mouth of their seed. For I know their imagination, which they go about even now, before I brought them into the land which I swear, the land of Canaan. Moses therefore had clearly he knowed and gave you a homeland. Moses I said, you're still in the midst of sin. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge and said, Be strong and have a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. Moses said, What? Judge Joshua, go and take them, take them home. Keep them laws, be a man. Keep the commandments. And it came to pass. When Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it inside of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. See, put that the book in the Ark of the Covenant. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. He said, I know that thy rebellion and stiff neckedness. Behold, why am I yet alive with you this day? You turn of Israel. You have been rebellious against the Lord. You have been rebellious against Moses. I hear and he's still rebelling. <laughs> you say, what? What? And how much more after my death? Moses said, when I close my eyes, what are they going to do? Pay attention. Gather unto me all the elders of the, your tribes and your officers that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. Moses said, call. Bring all the, the heads of your tribes. Of who? The twelve tribes. Bring them. And I'm going to what? Read this law to them and what? And bear record against them. You see that? We have let heaven that the angels and the most high bear record that I warn them. Pay attention. So when the prophets are here warning the messengers are warning you, the angels and the most high are bearing record that you warn them. Pay attention. For I know that after my death you will utterly corrupt yourself and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, the laws of God, and evil will befall you in the latter days. In the what? In the latter days. That's why we scattered in the diaspora. That's why we conquered and the earth. You see that from 70 to now. Conquered on this fourth beast kingdom. Pay attention. Because, but the Mosai is merciful and compassionate, he will deliver us. Pay attention, because you're crying out and returning, and he's sending messengers, he's sending prophets. Go wake them, go get them up. Go breathe a better life into them. That is, say, go wake them up, get them, get them up. Because they're about to bring the destruction now. The Mosai said, go warn them. I'm compassionate towards them. Because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And Moses speak in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. So Moses, we, we, we see that, we put it in the read the right act, the right act to them. You see what? If all they violate, the most I will judge all the behind. That we tell, we're talking about. The most I will judge all. Go to um, Deuteronomy chapter 32. And we didn't go to Wanda. Deuteronomy 32 and Wanda to 46. Give ye, O ye bread, ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O ye earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, and my speech shall distill as the dew. As the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, 
Moses said, what? I will publish the name of the Lord. The most I'm going to testify God openly. I testify my Savior openly. I'm going to write all them laws in a book. You see that? And leave it for them. Ascribe you greatness unto our God. You see that? The most is the one true living God. Pay attention. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. The most I say will be compassionate to you. Once you do, I command you to do. Pay attention. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of history. They are perverse and crooked generation. Once you don't do the law, 30 commandments, the most I command you to turn Israel for your good Israelites. You see, you become perverse and crooked. Most I say, I have a problem with you now. Do you thus require the Lord? O oh, foolish people and unwise. You see that Moses say you require the Lord? You foolish and you unwise for violating his laws. Oh, think you could go against the Mosai. Thinking you wiser than him. You see that? So long I'm playing games. You see that? And friends sitting, being lukewarm. The Mosai say, what? You not wiser than me? What? Is not ye thy father? I am compassionate unto you. That's the Mosai says. I spare in your life. Pay attention. Is not ye thy father that had brought thee, bought thee? Had he not made thee and established thee? The Mosai say, I create everything and I create you. And you should not be wise for me. Pay attention. Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Go back, ask thy fathers and he will show thee. Thy elders and they will tell thee. Inquire of your history. What is the history of the Mosai? What is the track record of the Mosai? I'm compassionate to them that keep my law. If they don't, I will destroy them. I will destroy. Pay attention. If you don't do what I tell you to do, I will take you out. You see that? When the Mosai divided into the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, when he did what? separated the sons of Adam. All men that were born from Adam, he separated all nations. He divided all the nations. You see that? He set the bonds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. To the what? The number of children of the twelve tribes. The twelve tribes. For the Lord's portion is his people. The most I say, I picked them for me. I made all men. I created all men. But them are mine. Do you see that? The Lord's tribe, uh, the Lord's portion is the children of Israel. They are the children of God. They come through the same lineage of the children of God. Adam, Seth, Noah. You see that coming down through the Enoch, coming down through the lineage, coming down through Abraham, through Isaac, through Jacob. They are still my children. Now we're talking about them. Rest hidden. You see that I create all of them. But well, I don't know them. I separate them. I give everybody the piece of land. I give everybody the territory. But them is my children. They are my children. I know what I'm saying. I'm compassionate to them. I give them spe special laws. <laughs> you see that whole book of laws. 613 laws, you see that Moses say, I give them a whole book. You see that? That's for them. They're my minds. All go and study. Go and study and, and get smart. Go get, get why? You see what? This gonna be your why. Why do you see that? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgment. This is the reason why the Moses gave the turn of Israel statutes and judgment. As even as the Lord thy God commanded me, Moses said, I deliver God's message. That you should do so in the land where you go to possess it, in the land of Canaan. Keep their form, do them. Keep them statutes and judgments. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. In the sight of all the heathen nations. The most I said, that's why I give you all them 613 laws. Wisdom is <laughs> above them. I never deal with them. I never dealt so with any other nation. The most I said, uh, compassion? Yes. I've given you wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, all the heathen nations. Which shall hear all these statutes, you're going to hear about it, and say, Surely this great nation, the children of Israel, you see that, is what? Is a wise and understanding people. You see that? For what nation is there so great, who had God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that had statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I said before you this day? That's what we're talking about. That would do to me to talk about. Um, to do to me to two and verse 8. When the Mosai divided the nations, he separated the sons of Adam and he set the bonds according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. That's what he's saying. That's why I give you laws, statutes, and judgment. You're wise, you're wise above them. They're going to look at you and say, wow. You see that? He found him in a desert land. In what? In a desert land and in a waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He led him about. He instructed him in law, statutes, commandments, and judgment. He kept him as the apple of his eye. We are the apple of the Most High's eye. Pay attention. The apple of his eye. Pay attention. <laughs> That's why I'm going to have you above all nations. I'm going to separate you. Do you mind? <laughs> You're mine, children. That's mine. And as an eagle stirred up her nest, fluttered over her young, spread it abroad her wings, take at them, bear it them on wings. That's what the Most High. That's compassion. The Most High say, I take you out of all these nations. You. That's compassion. And you're taking this thing for granted. 
Saul alone, alone, alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock, butter and of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the bread of Bashan and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. You see, that's what he makes eat the best. That's what he's talking about, the best, he's eating the best. Because when he say fat of lambs, he's talking about what? The richest and nourishest fat. He doesn't eat the fat. <laughs> he's not to eat the fat. There's the Lord that says, don't eat the fat. When he say fat of lambs, he's talking about the healthiest lambs. <laughs> he's talking about healthy, the, the, the nice plump one. You see that? And the fat of kid. kid you see the kidneys of wheat. He's talking about the, the best wheat. When he say kidneys of wheat, he's talking about what? Does the wheat have kidneys? No. He's talking about the, 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 the most healthiest produce. You eat the best. That's what he's talking about. You eat the best. And the fat of the kidneys of wheat is best he's talking about. He's talking about fat, fat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. You see that pure grape wine, <laughs> pure grape juice. The best of the best he talking. That's what he's talking about in that verse. I treat you and you're living deliciously. You live deliciously. That's what most I say. But Jeshurun walks for you. Israel. Jeshurun is Israel. The Israel, the children of God. The children of Israel. You see what? Jeshurun walks for They get what? Complacent and kicked. They get complacent because most I say was compassionate to them and giving them the best to eat, the best to drink. You see that? The best pure of grapes. And they walk, they kick back and they start to get fat and lazy. That's what most I say. They ain't worshiping me no more. They start to drift away from my laws. But what? And thou art waxing fat, and thou art grow thick. You see that? The most I get you again thick around the waist. You're getting lazy. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him. That's what the most I talking. When he say waxing fat, means what? He started to forget the Lord. Because you, you, you think, I, you're prospering. I doing it. You see that? I'm going to do me. My own will. You see that? It's I doing it. And not understand the most I blessing me in the, in the background for obedience. The most I says, I blessing you. And you're thinking, you doing it. You get complacent. And what? Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. That's why he started to get complacent. I smart. You see that? I smart. I'm making my breaks. They provoked him to jealousy with strange God. Because most I say, I'm compassionate to all, I treat him all the nice. I give him all the best. And they do what? Provoke him to jealousy with strange God. You see that? You're abusing my compassion now. You're abusing my mercy. The most I say, no, 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 no. My kindness. You're abusing my kindness. The most I say, what? You provoked him to jealousy with strange God. You're going after idolatry by making yourself a God. That's what the most I say. I doing it. I'm making my breaks. With abominations provoked they him to anger. To what? To anger. So my compassion and my mercy go turn to anger. If you don't do what I tell you to do, pay attention. They sacrifice unto devils. So by not obeying the most high God, you are worshipping the devil. Stop. It's easy. If you're not keeping the laws of God in this book, you are worshipping Satan, the devil himself. Straight up. There's no in between, there's no lukewarm, there's no I go wait, I wait until the right time. There's no no the most I say if you are not keeping my laws. You are worshipping Satan. So if you're hearing and you're not doing, you're not activating and repenting and come back to the law, you are willfully worshipping Satan. Does say the law. This is the Bible. Yes. Because you are aware of who you are. Most I say what? They sacrifice unto devils and not to God. Because most I say if you're not obeying me, you children of Israel, who are you obeying? The devil. You are obeying Satan. There's no thing as sitting on the fence. Lukewarm. You are worshipping Satan. Once you're not doing what I tell you to do. And to what? To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up. Whom your fathers fear not. You see that the, your, your form of your forefathers never know nothing about them. Heathen gods. You see what? That we say what? In verse 7, remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations, and ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee, because they understood to keep the most high God laws. Because he's a, he's a great and a terrible God. He's compassionate, but he's, he's, he we have anger too. <laughs> he have wrath too. If you don't do, he tell you to do. You see that? Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful. You see that? The most high says, I deliver all you. You see that? I have Yahushua driving and wreaking havoc in Egypt, bringing all you out and destroying them, them Egyptians. Pay attention. You see what? But you will, of the rock that begat thee, thou art mindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. You see that? The most I say, all of forget me. You see that? Go to 1 Corinthians 10. Who is this rock you talking about? <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. Who created? Who was the creator that created? You need to pay attention. Who is this creator? First with created things on this earth. Yahushua Mashiach. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. They delivered us the exodus from Egypt and all come through the sea. And we all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They come through the water. Every time when he said baptized unto Moses, we the given the law when they come through. Come through the sea. And they all eat the same spiritual meat. And they all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock, uppercase R O C K, that followed them. And that rock, uppercase R, O-C-K, -O -C lowercase, was 
Yahushua. You see that? The Yahushua was the them bringing up the children of Israel with Moses to the sea. You see that? What? <laughs> Attention. The angel of the Lord and the army of the Lord is what brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. The angel of the Lord and the army of the Lord is what coming to deliver the children of Israel out of what? The spiritual Solomon Egypt, which is under the fourth Roman beast kingdom. Pay attention. It's your deliverer. He's coming to deliver you out again. So you're going to send a message just to warn you. Repent. Confess his sin. Forsake his sin. That's compassion. That's what he's saying. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for the overturn in the wilderness because of violation for going to sin. He said, what? I tell them to keep them laws. Keep them laws and I have to put all it to death. I have to kill my own brethren. Pay attention. Jump to verse 1 Corinthians 10 and 8. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Yahushua. You see that? Tempt Yahushua as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur you as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. So he is the destroyer, Yahushua Mashiach. He came and was leading children of Israel out of Egypt and he came and delivered the children of Israel out of what? This fourth beast kingdom under Rome, the kingdom of Rome. You see that Rome and the four and <laughs> who put you in your tentacles. Pay attention. This fourth beast kingdom. And when, verse 18 again, Deuteronomy 32, 18 again, of the rock that begat thee, thou art mindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. The most I did what? Abhorred them. I didn't compassionate to nobody in the midst of wickedness. That was the most I said, no. You see that? You better repent. I will send one warning before I bring judgment, <laughs> before I smack you. Because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. The most I said, I'm not going to pamper or condone evil. Yes, I'm not going to destroy it, I'm going to warn you. So this is still compassion. He said, because I'm going to warn on this. Still, before I bring, before I bring the big hood, I'll give you a chance to fix it. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his son and of his daughters. Because it's, you're my children. Moses <laughs> said, you're mine. I created all, but you did my portion. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation. Children in whom is no faith. The Moses said, all oh, they don't have faith. So faith was where? Always here. You see, you see, you see, you see, you come and bring faith, and then the faith, and yet, faith was always here, Abraham had faith, you pay attention, they always had faith, Moses said, by you going away from my laws, you have no faith, so by you keeping my laws, you have faith, this was always here, pay attention, Moses said, for the generation, I will turn up, I will hide my face from you, means I will take away your protection, pay attention, verse 21, they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God, they have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. Stop. The most I said will move you Israelites to jealousy with those which are what? Not a people. Pay attention. Pay attention. The most I call these hidden nations not a people. Not a people. He said, but you can bring Babylon against you. They are not a people. I will provoke you to anger with them with a foolish nation. The most I say what? The Roman Empire is, is by bringing against the 70 titles of Vespasian in this fourth beast kingdom. I will read the Bible. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. The most I say they are not a people because you are people unto me. I give you laws, statutes, commandments. That's what we will say. The nation to say what people had so much laws and statutes and commandments. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 8. And what nation is there so great that that statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I said before you? You see that? They will say they are what? A wise and understanding people. Deuteronomy 4 and 6. Pay attention. That's why the Moses say, you are above. The Moses say what? With Deuteronomy 32, 21. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not the people. I will let, 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 let these hidden nations conquer behind. All the hidden nations will rule and dominate over you. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. I will let the hidden of what? A, not the people and a foolish nation conquer you and rule over you. And eat all the fat. You see that? Drink all the honey. Eat all the butter. Drink all the milk, you see that? All the fat of the, the pure, the best of the best, they drink in the pure blood of the grape, the best of grape juice. Pay attention. The Moses said they will be living deliciously in your place, in your palace, eating your food. A king's meal, eating king's food. That's why, because why? Back to Deuteronomy 32 21, I will move them to jealousy. Because what? They provoke me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those that are not a people. You see that? And I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. That we're talking about. Romans chapter 11 and verse 11. Romans chapter 11, verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles. You see that? For to provoke them to jealousy. To, to what? To provoke the southern kingdom and not to, 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 to jealousy. Because this one is talking about the divided kingdom. To provoke Judah to jealousy because Judah went in the sin just like the like Northern Kingdom. But so the Mosai does it within the nation and outside the nation. Same way. 
You see, I go use the heathen to provoke it. I go use what? Northern kingdom, northern ten tribes, because they were in the midst of idolatry. And most of the time, I go wake them up and bring them back to the laws. So Judah, you southern kingdom, who knew you, you would, could come back to the Lord. You get jealous and you repent and come back. I do it with what? The heathen here in Deuteronomy. Most I say what? I remove them to jealousy, Deuteronomy 32 and 21, with, a, with, a, with those which are not a people, the heathen. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation, the heathen. I will bring Babylon, I will bring the Romans again to behind. I will bring the Medo-Persians, I will bring, I will bring the Greeks, I will make them conquer you for violation. For fire is kindled in my anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with an increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischief, mischiefs upon them, and I will spend my arrows upon them. See, that's the most I say, once you violate, <laughs> I have a problem. I'm coming against you. They shall be burnt with hunger, you're going to starve. Are we burning with hunger? Yes, many of us don't have a meal to eat. Scattered in the four winds of the diaspora. Don't have a meal to eat for days, for weeks, for months. Pay attention. You shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will send the teeth of beasts upon them. So that, that nation, you see that? With another people and foolish nation, he called them beasts. He created them to beasts. Go to Ecclesiastes 3 and 18. Prove all things. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 18. I said in my heart, King Solomon, considering the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, that they might see that they themselves are beasts. He says, man as beast. Pay attention. So that there, a man had no preeminence above a beast for all his vanity. See so what? Man is equating man as beast. Just using references to any beast and beast and beast. Most I say, what? I'm going to send these hidden nations as beasts. Equate them as beasts. Emotionless. You see that? No, no remorse. Because most I say, because you don't want to hear me. Pay attention. Go back to Deuteronomy 32 and verse 24. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them. These heathen nations, the most I say, because they are what? They are not a people, and I will prove them to anger with a foolish nation. These heathen, you see what? Call them beasts. And the poison of serpents of the dust, you see that? And the sword without and terror within. The, the what? The sword without and terror within. This proof is the man is talking the world when he say beast. Psalm 17 verse 13. Arise, O God, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. The wicked of the earth is the Lord's sword. You see, we call them what? Those which are not a people. Deuteronomy 32 and 21. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. And verse 24. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them. That's what we call them. The sword. The sword of the Lord. The heathen, the Roman, the fourth Roman beast kingdom that you're under now. Babylon, which you're under. medo Persian, The Greeks, which Alexander the Greek and his crew, which you were under. And Chilkos. You see, they pay attention to the wicked of the earth. Which is I saw the hidden nations. Most I said, let them conquer you behind. From men which are thy hand. From who? Men. So this wicked is not men, men of the earth, the hidden nations which are thy hand. They're the hand of the Lord. Pay attention. From men of the world, we see that which have their portion in this life. This is their kingdom. That's why they what? Whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. The, your children of Israel treasure, I give it to them. I reward them for you because for your wickedness. I take your wealth from you, give it to them. I take your food from you, give it to them. Pay attention. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to the babies. They pass on inheritance, inheritance. They have your money, your wealth. Now the Moses said, give them all your wealth. Go back to um, Deuteronomy 32 and verse 25. The sword went out. You see that? These hidden nations which are my hand. My hand according to Psalms 17 verse 13 and 14. They are my hand to punish you. Nebuchadnezzar, my servant, to punish you. Cyrus, my, my anointed, to punish you. Pay attention. Alexander the Greek, to punish you. You see that? And out of him come Antiochus. You see that? P pay attention. To punish you, children, is also a violation of my law. And for Titus Vespasian, to punish you. Herod, to punish you. Pontius Pilate, to punish you. Nero, to punish you. That's why he banished what? John the Revelator, the island of Patmos. He was under Nero. Nero doesn't want to banish him. Pay attention. To punish the children of Israel for violator, because I will send everybody in captivity. Deuteronomy 32 25. The sword without and terror within, and shall destroy both the young man and the virgin and the suckling also with the man of grace. They will not have mercy on nobody. Take them all, kill them all. <laughs> the most I say, kill them all for violation. Verse 26, I said, I will scatter them into corners. Most I say, well, what? Scatter each one of Israel into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men for violation. For violation of the laws. You see that? Deuteronomy 4 27. Who will scatter into corners? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and you shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether the Lord shall lead you. You will be scattered into among the heathen nations from 70 to now. Pay attention. You run from 70 AD, run, 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 out to the what, the East Coast, West Coast, South Coast, Africa. We way out to the West Coast, Africa, running, running, running. Spread through the African continent. The one most say, what? Still come and run around there because you're still in the midst of sin and idolatry. The most I say, go and get them 60, 19. Go and get them, you see that? In the North and Central America, you see that? 
pay attention. Conan and Cortez, go get them in the North, South, and Central Americas. And go get them in 1619. Go, um, go get them in 1619 and bring them. Columbus came in 1492. Pay attention. Pay attention. Must I say what? I'm going to scatter into corners and I'm going to make the remembrance of you to see some among men. I'm going to take away identity. You're going to forget who you are. You're going to forget you're the children of God. I make you a special brand for me. Plop from the fire. Verse 23 to 27. Wait not that I fear the wrath of the enemy, lest the adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord had not done this. You see that? For they are a nation void of counsel. The most I say, children of Israel, the Israelites are void of what? Counsel. You don't want to do my laws. You don't want to keep my laws. Neither is there any understanding in them. The most I say you have no understanding, lack of understanding. You're still thinking you could do it. You're still thinking you want reparations in the land of your captivity. The most I said, no, I give the heathen your wealth. They ain't giving you nothing, not a penny, not a dime. The most I said, no, I want you to repent, forsake your sins and come back to my law. And you will, they will bring all that wealth back to you. Pay attention, you need to pay, read the Bible. The most I is about to give you back all the wealth on the earth, all the power. Eat the best, drink the best, back into your, your palace, royalty. You pay attention. <laughs> And you were rejecting it. The most I say, what? For they are nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding them. You are void of understanding. The most I say, understanding. Or that they were, they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. The most I say, I pray, I, they, well, if you had wisdom, you would pay attention and understand what will happen to you in your latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except the rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? You see that? How could Columbus come with what? Three ships. And take down the whole of the Americas and pay attention. Cortes, they come and conquer everything. Pay attention. 1619, how they come with what ships and take you out of the... Pay attention. We were done running things in the West Coast of Africa. Pay attention. <laughs> we were building kingdoms, ruling people. Pay attention. And these men are going to take you down. Except what? Your rock had sold them. The most I turned them back, turned away from your protection. <laughs> yes. He turned his protection away from you. Except the rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up. You see that? Yahushua is the defender. He's the commander-in-chief. He sold you. And the Lord, uppercase the Lord, the Mosai, shut them up. You see that? Once the Mosai gave the decree, Yahushua, they carried the wood out. He's the rock. Pay attention. He's the defender. He was coming to get you? Him. Just as he delivers from under Pharaoh in Egypt with Moses. Pay attention. Who is Deuteronomy 32 31? For the rock is not as our rock. You see how he said? Their low, lowercase arrow CK is not as our uh, uppercase arrow CK, Yahushua. You see that? He said, their Savior ain't like, no, you see that Titus and Vespasian? They ain't like Yahushua Mashiach. Let me see he's talking about. He said, and all these, these modern day kings and presidents and whoever they call the be. You see that? That governor just against the Mosai. He said, they are not as our Savior, Yahushua Mashiach, our rock, uppercase our OCK. Even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom. They are the what? Their vine is of the vine of Sodom, or their lineage. You see that? Their vine is as the vine of Sodom. See, pay attention. Go to Psalm 84. Psalms 84 and verse. Psalms 84 and, sorry, Psalms 80 and verse 8. Psalms 80 and verse 8. Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Thou hast bought a vine out of Egypt. A who? A vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it, the children of Israel. He brought the children out of Egypt and he cast out who is the heathen? The Canaanites. Clear the land of Canaan for them. <laughs> this is your homeland now. The Moses say, from captivity, this is your new homeland. Clear the heathen out, the Canaanites out. Pay attention. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it, planted the children of Israel in the land of Canaan. Pay attention. Now we're talking about the vine. So the vine, the children of Israel, their vine, but this hidden vine is not, is not of the vine is what? We have to determine 32 and 32. For their vine, the hidden nations, is of the vine of Sodom. They have to have the spirit of Sodom. You see that? And of the fields of Gomorrah. They have the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah. Pay attention. Pay attention. That, what do they promote? They pay attention. It was like suddenly of Satan. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Most I say they have not of my vine. My vine is them who I bring out of Egypt. Pay attention. They are my children who I choose for myself. But them a foolish nation according to verse 21. They are what? I will move into jealousy with those are not a people. They are not a people, and I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. They are a foolish nation. Verse 24, I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them. They are beasts. Most I say what? Verse 32, for their vine, their lineage is of the vine of Sodom, of the lineage of Sodom, and of the grapes of Gomorrah. They have the Sodom and Gomorrah spirit of, the, of Satan. Their grapes are grapes of gall, and the clusters are bitter. 
The wine is the poison of dragons. Sorry, the wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of us. Of the cruel venom of what? Us. Us. A serpent. What is the us? What is, what is poison? Kill. What does the venom do? Kill. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belong it vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. The most I say what? To me belong what? Vengeance. 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 I will repay. I come to me what? I go repay. And their foot shall slide in due time. I take them down. For the day of the calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. The most I say, their judgment is about to come down. You see, pay attention. I punish you. We see that. For the Lord shall judge his people. The most I say, what? I'm going to judge his people. You see, the children of Israel are what? Their vine is the vine of Solomon Gomorrah. You see that the most I they're going into the midst of sin. The children, their vine is the vine of Solomon. I will read from 31 again. For their rock is not as our rock. You see that? Even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and the fees of Gomorrah, and the grapes are grapes of gold, their crosses are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of us. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belong it vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. So Moses said, I will judge all behind for all these lifestyles. Most of them are life says, most I say what? And I will but repent for his servant. So I will show my compassion. I will show my compassion. I will repent. When he see that their power is gone. The most I say when they what? You become powerless. I will take away your usher from you. I will take away your rock from you, your, your protector. And I take away my protection. And but, and there's none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods and their rock in whom they trusted? You see what? Their lowercase rock. Means what? The devil. Satan. They're following Satan. Expecting to protect them. And the uppercase arrow, arrow CK is Yahushua. Uppercase arrow, lowercase arrow CK, that's Yahushua. It's because they're going there following Satan. With did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Let the devil and his angels protect you, that we say. But these false gods and idols. See now that I, even I am he. There is no God with me. The most I say, I am the only one true living God. I kill. I kill, I, I would scatter behind under Nebuchadnezzar, burn and put to death under the Medo-Persians, under the Greek, under the Roman, for this kingdom, and I still alone put it to death for violation. I make a life. I will give you immortality. I will bring you back to my laws. I wound. I will take you down. You see that? Destroy you for violation, and I heal. I will, I will heal you because I'm compassionate. If you do what I tell you to do, I will heal you. If you do what I tell you to do, I will make your life. Come back to your spiritual life. Pay attention. If it violate, I will kill and I will wound. Pay attention. By the hand of the heat, which is the wicked, which is my sword. Neither is there any that can deliver to my hand. If I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. The most I say, I will pay them back. But anybody who hate me, I will judge the vengeance to you. And I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh. And that, with the, and that with the blood of slain and of captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. He said, Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries. He's coming to take these nations out for what? The deliverance of his people. Because we are crying out unto the Lord and we repenting to the Messiah, showing compassion. God's compassion. He said, Once you come, come, confess and forsake your sins, come back to my law, I will compass, be compassionate. But what? Verse 43, Deuteronomy 32, 43. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, and he will avenge the blood of his servants. Who is the Lord's servants? Leviticus 25, 55. Leviticus 25, 55. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. The most I say, I, my, I never change. They are my servants. I am avenging the blood of the children of Israel. You pay attention. And he will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful. Deuteronomy 32 and 43. He will render vengeance to his adversaries, the heathen, and will be merciful unto his land, the children of Israel, and to his people, the children of Israel. Who's his people? Matthew 2 and 6. Let's go New Testament. Matthew 2 and 6. Who's the Lord's people? Matthew 2 and 6. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. The Israelites are still God's people. Pay attention. You see what? I go what? Back to Deuteronomy 32. And verse 43, and he will what? Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will revenge the blood of his servants 
and will render vengeance to his adversaries, the heathen nations that conquer them, and will be merciful unto his land and his people. So Moses will have mercy unto his land, and be merciful unto his people. Compassion, compassion, and mercy. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song into the ears of the people, he and Hosea, Hosea the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. To who? To all Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts, your minds, unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which you shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. Keep them laws that is commandments. You see that? Pay attention. Because most I say, I'm compassionate to you. Once you do, I tell you to do. I come in and get you. And I bring in havoc on this earth. I take out everything in my sight. Go to Psalm 78 and verse 37 and verse 38. We saw this. Read Deuteronomy 30 first. Read Deuteronomy chapter 30 and read verse 1 to 7. Deuteronomy 30, read 1 to, 1 to 7. God. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations without the Lord thy God had driven thee, and shall return unto the Lord thy God. Come back to my Lord's that is commandments. Don't you remember who you are? And what? And shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children, with all thine heart, all thy mind, and with all thy soul, all thy fiber, then that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. You see that? The most I say, once you come back and you do what I tell you to do, I will take you, deliver you to this captivity under this fourth Roman beast kingdom. I will deliver you, you see that? From all those that conquer you from 1780, conquer you from 1619, 1492, you see that? And take the children of God, the Jews of God, the apple of God that are into captivity. Because the most I say, I turn my back on you for your sin, for your iniquities. And come into what? I have compassion unto you and do what? That then, the, then shall the Lord re return and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations without the Lord thy God has scattered thee. I is the one that scattered you. Pay attention. And I will have compassion and come back. Won't you come back to my laws? If any of thine be driven out into the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee and from thence will he fetch thee. So where does Catherine, the diaspora, in the transatlantic slave trade, he said, all do the conquering in North and Central America and scatter you throughout the globe. You see that and have you at the, at the bottom of society, trampling you, treating you as nothing. The most I say, I will come and gather you from thence. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land that thy fathers possess. Back to the land of Canaan, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Back to the land of Canaan. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, your mind, and the heart of thy seed, the turn. And to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, your mind, and with all thy soul, with all thy spirit, the fiber. And that thou mayest live. That's where you're going to gain mortality. Oh, you're going to live eternal life, everlasting life. Back to your angelic status. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. That's what the Messiah say. He's he going to put the curses on them. Pay attention. Pay attention. The God is compassionate to you, you children of Israel, but you keep doing my laws. Jump to verse 4, 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgment that thou mayest live. So how are you going to live? Keeping the laws, statutes, commandments, judgment of the Most High God. And like verse, um, to verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Moses say what? I call heaven to bear witness, the angels and the most I bear witness, I mean that I testify against you, Israel, I teach you on Israel. Repent and confess and forsake your sin. Now we say, what? That you're going to get, you're going to get life and most are going to have compassion, otherwise you're going to put it to death, you're going to pass in the carnage. If you don't repent, that's what he's saying, you're going to pass in the carnage, you're going to pass in the mayhem that's about to take place on this earth. Psalm 78, verse 37 and 38. Psalm 78, verse 37. For their heart was not right with him. Do you see that? The children of Israel, they have, their mind was not right with the Mosai. You see that? Go to verse 35. And they remember that God was their rock. And the high God, their Redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. And they lied unto him with their tongue. They know who the God is. They see that? But they what? They still lie and they flatter him. Talk. They say, I love God. I love God. I have a personal relationship with God. You see that? I'm I married to him. You pay attention. Most I say they're lying. Flattering and lying. But you ain't doing what I tell you to do. You ain't keeping law one, but you say you love me and you have a personal relationship with me. And you know me. Most I say what? But they, not, nevertheless, they did flatter with him with their mouth. Vague, vague platitudes. You see that? And they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart, their mind was not right with him. You were, you were not in one accord with the Most High. We are not in the, we are not in sync. We are not on the same page. I give you commandments. You're not doing them. We are not in alignment. Most I say, what you, you're against me. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. They didn't want to keep the laws. But you're being selective. But he being full of compassion, he what the Most High what being full of compassion forgave their iniquity. The Most High said, God's compassion. I always forgive the children of Israel when they repent and come back to me. 
He said, I'm going to punish you, and I'm going to smack you around. But once you confess the sin and forsake them, I will forgive you. And he being what? Full of compassion. Moses is full of compassion. Forgive their iniquity, sin, and destroy them not. You see that Moses said, not utterly destroyed all you. punish them all but not utterly destroyed. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. You see that? The Moses said, many times I could have taken all you all out, take everything out. But what? I see that now. Compassionate towards them. Give them a chance. Give them a chance, as the Moses did from 70 years now. Is that compassion? Yes. Yes, the most I said, punish you, but I ain't destroying all him. Because I will send angels in the end, I will send prophets in the end, I will, say, I will send messengers in the end. Go and warn them, go and tell them, go and breathe a better life in them. You see that? Go and wake them up. Breathe the better life into them and bring them back to me. We we'll bring them back to my Lord's Statistic Commandments. Go to Isaiah 49 and verse 15. Isaiah 49, verse 15. Isaiah 49 and 15. 49, verse 15. Can a woman forget to suck in child? You see that? Read from verse 13. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted, upon the throne of Israel. Moses said, will have mercy upon you. He said, pay attention. Because what? But Zion said, the Lord had forsaken me, and my Lord had forgot me. So you see that? You are saying, God forgive me, and forsake me, and forgot me. You're in the midst of sin and violation. I said, give you a time out. Can a woman forget her second child? The most I say, what? Isaiah saying, can a woman forget her second child? That she should not have compassion on the son of a womb? You see that? Could a woman forget that child that she have what, from the womb? He say, yeah. They may, they may forget. He say, what? They may forget. Yes, because some of the, the, the daughters of Zion are cruel. He say, yeah, they may forget. Yet will I not forget thee. You see that? The most I say, what? The woman might forget that child, but I will never forget you, children of Israel. I will never forget you. Pay attention. Because some of these daughters of Zion, you see, they made their babies and walk away from them, put them in a dumpster. You see that? Get them up for adoption, do whatever. The most I say, but what? I will never forget you. I will punish you behind, I will cast you out, but I'll come in and get you. I'm coming to get you. That's what the most I say. I will come and never forget you. Any VR means never, never ever. Go to Jeremiah 12, verse 14, 15. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 14, 15. Jeremiah 12 and 14. Jeremiah 12 verse 14. Thus said the Lord against all my evil neighbors that touch the inheritance which I have caused, which have caused my people Israel to inherit. Which what? Which I have caused my people in Israel to inherit is. He said, All who interfere with the land of Israel, the most I say what? The land of Canaan. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land. The most I say what? All who is inhabiting my land of Canaan, my the homeland of my people, I will what? I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. I will take the children of Israel from where they be gone, where they scattered. Because I say, what? I will take them out. And it's a come to pass. After that I have plucked them out, I will return and have compassion on them. Moses, I say, what? I will have compassion on them. I will bring them again, every man to his heritage and every man to his land. Back to your land. Back home. Moses, I, that's compassion on the Moses, I God. You need to pay attention. Know the God is serving. Go to Matthew 4 and verse 17. You we didn't know the Old Testament. See, the Old Testament, the Old Testament. God forget the Israelites. Let's, read. Let's go to New Testament and see something now. It's all one book. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Yahushua began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yahushua ministry was what? Repentance or returning to God's laws. Stop. That's compassion. Repentance, like being compassionate. This is the Son of God, the rock, the rock that we're talking about throughout the... We was in Deuteronomy. Yeah, the rock was there. Christ was there all the, from all the beginning. From bringing the children of out of Egypt. Yeah, he was there right through the book. The most I see what? He come and teach what? Moses said, him on earth, go and go down as a man and teach him what? Repent. Return to the law for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm about to establish rulership on this earth. Come back to my laws. Compassion? Yes. This compassion will continue. Pay attention. Compassion is go to Matthew 9 and read verse 10 down. Matthew 9 and verse 10 go down. And it came to pass as Yahushua sat at meat in, the house of, in his house. Behold, Many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. So the, 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 the sinners came and was eating. You see that he was eating and they come and they sat down. And he's with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eat at your master with publicans and sinners? Why are you entertaining them sinners and publicans? You see that? But when Yahushua heard that, he said unto them, They that behold need not of his son. He said, All the arrogant to self. You the leaders of the nation, you the vanguards of the nation. He said, You're arrogant. You don't want to humble to me. You don't want the hear my teaching? You don't want Christ or you don't want my word? You see that? You see what? They that behold, all the whole already. Okay. 
Need not a physician. All they good already? All they saved? Okay, all they don't need me. But they that are sick, them need me. They sinners, they may miss a sin, they acknowledge their sin and their transgression and coming back. They want to hear, they want healing. But go ye and learn what that means. He said, go and understand what they say to you. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. I will have what? Mercy. I will have mercy and I don't want animal sacrifice. He said, but I will have mercy on them. I will have mercy on them because they want to repent. They want to hear the word, they want to be healed. He said, I will have mercy on them, and but I don't want no animal sacrifice. So you, you van guys, and keep sinning, keep sinning on the down low. You see that? I'm pretending, keeping on, I'm being, I'm, I'm breaking the most high God laws on the down low. Most I say what? I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Animal sacrifice then under the Pharisees. He said, deception and deceit under these van guys now. Most I say what? Keep. I don't want that. I don't want no sin. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The proud and arrogant. You see that? You see that? They fooled themselves, thinking in the name of the Lord, righteous. Self-righteous, but they don't want you to shut out in the institution. There's some crazy stuff. You see what? I'm not come to call the righteous because they're self-righteous and they're pompous, but what? But sinners are repentant. Those who will humble themselves and keep the law, come back to the law. You see that? And subject, subject themselves or subjugate themselves to the teachings of Christ, to the laws of God. Then came to him the disciples of John saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often? But thy disciples fast not. They say the same, but we, we fast. But how come you are a little fast? And Yahushua said unto them, Can the children and the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? He said, Why do they need to fast? I with them. I teaching them. I teaching them repentance and healing them. He said, But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. He said, Then because they don't have the, 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 the tutor in the midst of them. I'm not there to tutor them right. You see that? So then they have to fast and ask for wisdom and I go send the spirit to them. That we're talking about. No man put a piece of new cloth unto an old garment for that which is put in it. Fill it for that which is put to it. Sorry, for that which is put in it to fill it. I read that again. No man put it a piece of new cloth unto an old garment for that which is put in to fill it up, take it up from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles. Jump, jump down to verse 24 23. And when Abuja came into the ruler's house and saw the ministers and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place for the maid is not dead, but sleep it. And they laughed him to scorn. I'll read up, read up. Keep reading. 17. 18. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Yahushua rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, twelve years, came from behind him, and touched the hem of his garment. And she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Yahushua turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith had made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Yahushua came into the ruler's house, and saw the ministers and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place. For the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. Did they what? They laughed him to scorn. They mock him. You see that? But when the people were put forth, he put them out. You see that? He, he put them out. And when he took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame here went abroad in all the land. So with this establishing, cause compassion. The son carried on the compassion of the father. Pay attention. Pay attention. He carried on the compassion of the father. Go on. Verse 35. And Yahushua went about all the cities and villages, teaching to the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he went to teaching what? In the Pharisee synagogues. Teaching repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's compassion. He was warning them, forewarning them. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. He was what? Moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. It's the throne of Israel. He says, scattered as sheep having what? No leader. Them vangas and Pharisees cannot lead the throne of Israel. You see what? They have sheep having no shepherd, no leader. That's why Yahushua must be taught. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous. There's plenty of them out there need to get repent the call to repentance, but the laborers are few. He said, Few are you gonna go. Keep my Lord's statutes, commandments, and judgment and testimony. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. That you're gonna send more. You see that? More more disciples to come and go and gather the elect. Go and go and gather them when they scattered. That's what he's saying. What he's saying. And when Yahushua heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, 
They followed him on foot out of the city, so the masses went behind him. You see that where he went. And Elisha went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them, and he healed their sick. You see that? He is always compassionate. God's compassion. The, the sun continue? Yes, the same compassion. And he's going to what? Heal you. No, he's going to allow them to continue in sin and evil. He nailed us into the cross. No, he said he healed their sickness, sick spirit, sin, sin, inequity. That he's compassionate, giving you time to repent, remorse. Time to give to show remorse and repent and come forsake his sin and come back to my law. And when it was even, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves with choice. He sent them so they will go and get food because they're getting late. But Ahusha said unto them, They need not depart. Give you them to eat. He said, No, don't run them. Don't send them away. They come for healing. I won't heal them. He said, that, Give them food. And they said unto him, We have but here five loaves and two fishes. We only have five loaves, five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. So he said, All go and feed them. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up the, of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men. Besides women and children, you see that? And straightway Yahushua constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side. And his boy sent the multitudes away. So after he feed them, he sent them away. What is he talking about here? Go to verse 17. And they said unto him, We have there five loaves and two fishes. Five times, five times two is ten. He's talking about the ten northern tribes. And he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass and he took the five loaves and the two fishes. Five to the ten, the ten northern tribes. You see that? And he said to the disciples, Go feed them. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up of the fragments that remained, twelve baskets for the twelve tribes all together. Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom, Judah, Israel, the United Kingdom of Israel. Pay attention. He's telling you his compassion is what? There's the same children of Israel that had compassion from the Old Testament. My son is coming and have this compassion to the same children of Israel. Who he went to? The same children of Israel, the same twelve tribes. Pay attention. It's the same twelve tribes I'm dealing with. I'm never, I never went to nobody else. Pay attention. Go to Matthew chapter 15 and read verse 1 now. Then came the Jehoshua, then came to Yahushua scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, So the common was bragging him about why did why did the disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they washed not their hands when they eat bread. So he's telling you what? They bragging him. They eating and they washing their hands. Jump to verse 7. He called them what? You hypocrites. Where did Isaiah prophesy of you saying? Well, he said what he called them hypocrites. These people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth, lip service, but they honor and honor me with their lips. But their heart, their mind is far from me. They ain't keeping them laws. You see, they're violating my law still. Willful sin. They're keeping some of them, they're keeping most of them, but they're still willfully breaking some. Because they know who they are, they are where. They are false prophets. Are we talking about they what? Hypocrites or false prophets. Or evil angels. Pay attention. Or evil prophets. Pay attention. But in vain do they worship me. What do you mean worshiping in vain? This is the this is the Pharisees, the leaders of the nation of Israel. You see that? They are worshiping him in what? In vain. This is this as these modern vanguards. They're worshiping him what? In vain. Because they are willfully sinning. Pay attention, <laughs> pay attention. But in vain they do worship me. That's why they don't want Yahushua taught. Pay attention, because he's going to expose them. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines. They're teaching what? Doctrines, doctrines of men, commandments of men, traditions of men. Pay attention. Teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. They're doing their own thing. You see that? They're running a corporation. You see that? And the the, 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 the the men of the Lord. But they're running a business on the people. Pay attention. Abusing the sisters, they pay attention. Abusing the brothers, abusing the flock. Pay attention. He said, what doctrines are men. In vain they worship me. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. He said, listen and what to reveal to you. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, that defileth a man. He said, not with you. you can eat nothing to go in there to defile you. But what is peak is what going to defile you. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended? He said, these vanguards were offended by the teachings of Yahushua. You see that? They were offended. Offended. And what? After they had heard the saying, but he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father had not planted shall be rooted up. They are not from God. That we just said of the Pharisees? Yes. My heavenly father, the most high, never planted them. They are evil spirits, evil angels, deceive, deceivers. Pay attention. False prophets. You see that these vanguards? False prophets. If they don't want to who taught, they are false prophets. Every plant which my heavenly father had not planted shall be rooted up. The most I never send them. That's what he said. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind be, be led 
And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. He said, leave them people who fall on them. They are blind leaders. Lead them. They are blind leaders. We mean false prophets or fallen angels or evil angels or evil spirits. And if the blind lead, be leaders of the blind, all who follow them, both shall fall into the ditch. They are all going to get death, destruction. How are we teaching? Yes. If you want to keep following these false prophets and these false vanguard schools, pay attention. You are going down with them. He's saying, because they don't want your Hushua taught. He said, don't anyone teach Christ, put them out of the organization. He said, pay attention. They are not of Christ. My, my father never plans to send them. Moses said, yeah, Hushua said, bless you, see, they are not offended in me. Go and testify my Savior openly. Go and testify me. Go and confess me before men. Matthew chapter 15 and read verse 32. Then I shall call his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days have and have nothing to eat. I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. See, I didn't send them away without feeding them, because they stay here three days now with, with, with me. Um, and his disciples said unto him, When should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? He said, We will get bread, food to feed them. And his disciples say unto him, when shall we have much bread in the wilderness to feed so great a multitude, to fill so great a multitude? And I said unto them, How many loaves have you? And they said, Seven, and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes, and gave them, and break them, and gave them to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat, and they were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets full. So the seven loaves, and they get seven baskets. And as they did eat, and so on. And they that did eat was 4,000 men besides women and children. So he had seven baskets, seven fishes, and he feed seven thousand, sorry, and he fed, he had seven loaves, seven baskets, and he fed 4,000 men. So seven and seven is 14 and 4,000. One, four, four, zero, 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 144,000. The 144,000. Seven and seven, 14, one, four, and four zero 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 one four four zero 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 the hundred and forty four thousand go to revelation chapter seven one maybe god compassion is to the children of israel always it never never change revelation seven and verse one and after these things i saw four angel angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree with wind talking about destruction you see that the holding the destruction of this so this four beast kingdom is about to go down pay attention and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. They are angels of destruction. Pay attention. <laughs> they come to destroy, they take down this beast, beast kingdom. They always take down every beast kingdom. So they back to take down this fourth beast kingdom. You see that? They say what? And the hurt, you see what? And saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. They say what? <laughs> Only hold it, hold it, hold it. Don't bring the hurt yet. Don't bring the destruction yet. Till we have what? We are sent on assignment. The most I sent me to seal them up first. To go and seal them at what? Go and, um, let's see what the seal is first. Go to Isaiah 8 and 16. He's going to seal Isaiah chapter 8 verse, 6, verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. The, law, the seal is what? The laws of God. They're coming to seal the laws of God among God's disciples. You see that? You see that? Who's the servants of God? Go to Leviticus chapter 25, verse 55. He said, Don't hurt till we seal the servants of God in their foreheads. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So he said, Don't hurt the earth or bring the destruction of this fourth beast kingdom till we seal the laws of God into the servants, the children of Israel. You see that? In their mind. In their mind. In their spirit. Pay attention. That's what's happening. Pay attention. The judgment is about to go down in this, this sinful kingdom. You see that God's compassion to the children of Israel. He said, it never fail. Like, scatter you and punish you. We're coming to get you. Verse 4. Revelation 7 and 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And they were sealed. A hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. A hundred and what? A hundred and forty and four thousand. Of all the what? The tribes of the children of Israel. Go back to Matthew chapter 15 and verse 34 again. And Yahushua said unto them, How many loaves have you? And they said, Seven, and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave them, gave thanks, and break them, and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. So they fed them. And they all, and they, they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left, seven baskets full. So seven loaves, seven baskets, seven and seven, fourteen. And they that did eat were four thousand men. 14, 1, 4, 
and four zero 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 the hundred and forty four thousand or the twelve child of the children of Israel. Pay attention. So God's, God's compassion never failed from the Old Testament, New Testament, same towards the children of Israel. Nothing is different. So you, you unlearn men keep talking about the New Testament is this, this book and it's so book and it's garbage. Garbage you're talking, you don't understand it. Deep parables. <laughs> the, the rock is still here. <laughs> the rock came to deliver them. The rock is coming back to deliver them. The rock came and walked, walk, came and walked with it among them. And the rock is coming back to the Greek havoc and Israel to deliver them. It's always about the children of Israel. So pay attention. The, 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 the ten tribes, these are the twelve tribes. We have chapter Matthew 14 and verse 17. And he said five loaves and two fishes. Five to the ten, the ten northern tribes. And verse Matthew 14 and verse 20, and they did, they did all eat and were filled, and they took up of the fragments that remained 12 baskets, the 12 tribes, the United Kingdom, Judah and Israel. Pay attention. Always the children of Israel. Always the children of Israel. This is, that's where I'm coming for, from the beginning, right through the book to the end. I will always be a rock. You see that? I will have compassion on you. Always. Nothing changes. Go to Matthew chapter 18 and read verse 20. Matthew 18. Read verse 20. Matthew 18 and verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Yahushua yeah, say, where two or three gathered together in my name, keeping the laws that is commandments of God, there am I in the midst of them. So that's where they're going to get the understanding. Because the Holy Spirit will be there with them. Pay attention. And not in none of these vanguard schools, and not in these Pharisees, synagogue, none of them. Them big temples. I dwell not in temples made with hands. I am where they are keeping my laws that is commandments, blameless. Where there's no deceit or craft or cunning craftiness. You see that? Oh, no, no, abuse of the flock. What are you talking about? Making merchandise of the people. Are we talking about? No, I'm not there. Pay attention. Go and give them warning from me. You see that? God's compassion. Go to. Psalms 120. Sorry, to jump that. Go to Luke chapter 15 and 1. Luke chapter 15, verse 1. Luke 15 and 1. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. You see that? And he spake a parable unto them, saying, What man of you having an hundred sheep? If he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise, the same way, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented. You see that? The angels rejoice over what? Each one sinner. Is that what we say? Where two or three are gathered together in my name, keeping them lost, statutes and commandments, blameless. I am in the midst of them. You always say, My spirit is there. The Father's spirit is there. Because if one sinner repent. You see that? You have the big Pharisee school, big Vanna school, and nobody repent. And they keep in the sin in the midst of sin. Sin and most I say, What? I am not there. One sinner repenting that over 99 just persons that need not repent, and 99 that keeping the laws. You see what? That one are going, are going for the one, my elect, are going for them. You see that? Likewise, I, when we stand, likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Every one sinner that repented. You see that? One by one, the, 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 the building is being completed. Let me say. One by one. World compassion, verse 12. And the young verse 11 and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that fall to me and he divided unto them his living and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted the substance with righteous living so he went and lived, have a live it up in the midst of sin and when he had spent all there arose a parable he went into the midst of sin and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want he lacked run out of food and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine, into captivity, conquered for violation of laws. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. You see that? He was eating what? Swine food. As we scattered in the diaspora, eating what? Swine food. Defiled foods we eaten in the midst of sin. Most I said, take away milk and your fat living for me. The best of your grape juice, take away that healthy lifestyle for you because Joshua and wax fat. Deuteronomy 32. And when he came to himself, when he what? Came to himself, mean what? When he remember himself, bethink himself. You see that? Repent and confess his sin. He said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, I will repent and confess and forsake my sin, and, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven 
and before they have confessed my sin to the most high, repent. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. He said, I'm, I'm a sinner. I'm a mere sinner. Make me as one of thy high servants. I wouldn't do anything in the, to get back in the kingdom. That's what he said. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The most I see, he repented. Once another repented, the angels rejoiced. So the most I will accept you. That's what he said. He will have compassion on you and he will welcome you. And he rose and came to his father, the most high. And when he was yet a great way off, he started to repent and confess and keeping the sin, keeping the laws. We, we confess and forsake his sin and keeping the laws. His father saw him and had compassion. The most I had what? Compassion on every sinner to repent. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The most I will accept you in open arms. Once you repent, forsake his sin, you will have compassion on you. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father, the most I said to his sons, his servants, Bring him forth, big did he said to the angels, bring forth the best robe and put it on him, because he confessed and forsake his sin. And a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet are going to reward you with immortality or the kingdom of everlasting life. And bring here the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. The angels are going to be what? Rejoice over every sinner that repent. Pay attention. For this my son was dead. In the midst of sin, according to Ephesians 2 and 1, you are the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, and is alive again. What's going to keep being alive? Proverbs 7 and 2. Keep my commandments and live. <laughs> Pay attention. He come back to the law. He forsake his sin and he come back to my law. And he was lost and is found. Lost because he was in the midst of sin and is found. He finally went back to me. He repent and forsake his sin. And they began to be merry. Because what? Verse 10. Verse 7. I say unto you, like, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented. You see that? Verse 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. You see that? And they began, verse 24, and they began to be merry. You see that? The angels rejoicing. Because the children of Israel are like standing up on their feet and re re confessing their sin and forsaking them. Come back to the Lord. So the Messiah has what? Compassion. He's going to receive you. Once you forsake your sin and come back to his Lord. Romans 9 and 17. Romans chapter 9, verse 17. Romans 9 and 17. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. The most I say what? The same way I raise up Pharaoh. You see that? Read verse 15. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. He said to Moses what? I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and compassion on whom I will. Mercy means compassion. Same thing. You see that compassion means mercy. And would I will, because I choose who I choose, and I hate who I choose. I love who. Jacob I love you, so I hate it. Verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I love, and Esau I hate. They were twins, but I choose one, and I despise one. One is of me, and one is of the devil. That we talking about. Satan's spirit on one, my spirit on one. I will have mercy on who I want, and I will have compassion on who I want. And what? So then it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, to destroy you. You see that? So Rome, under Titus and Vespasian, and conquered until 70 to now, is for this kingdom. To destroy them. I raise them up to do what? Destroy them. That's how they raise up Babylon. To destroy them. That's how they raise up the Persian. To destroy them. I raise up the, the Greek. To destroy them. So they raise up the fourth Roman beast kingdom. To destroy them. For, to show compassion for the children of Israel. Once they come back to me. See the father we have sinned. He said. The angels rejoice enough. Because they bring in the big hood. Therefore he had mercy. On whom he had mercy. And whom he had not. He will have not. That we talking about. To destroy them. Because they are vessels fitted for destruction. Pay attention, they destroy us, they need to punish. Um, go to Sirach 2 and 11. He said, I will have mercy and who I will have mercy and compassion and who I will have compassion. Sirach chapter 2, verse 11. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. He is full of what? Compassion and mercy. Long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins. Once you forsake and confess your sins, the most I say, I'm compassionate and merciful to you. I'll, I, will, I will welcome you with loving arms. You see that? And save it in time of affliction. I will deliver you. You see that? From your, your captivity, from your hell. Scattered in the four corners of the earth. You see that? Conquered. Most I say, once you come back to me, I will deliver you. And I will be compassionate to you. I will show compassion towards you. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 9. Who is this he's talking about? Wisdom of Solomon 3 verse 9. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. The law, statutes, commandments, and judgment. You see that the truth is Psalms 119 verse 142 and verse 151. The commandments and the laws of God. And such as be faithful in love. What is love? Great peace of the ways love the, love the law. You see that Romans 13 and 11. L love is the fulfilling of the law. Keeping the laws of God. First John 5 and 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandment. You see that? Second John 6 verse 6. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the love. 
that we say, and such as be faithful in the laws and the commandments, shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints. Who keep in the laws and the commandments? Once you forsake your sin and confess it, most I say grace and mercy is to you. Who is the saints? Psalms 50, Psalms 50 verse 5. Gather my saints together. Those that have made a covenant with me by animal sacrifice, by sacrifice, the children of Israel, verse 7. Psalms 50 verse 7. The Israel. Here Israel. He's talking about I will have grace and mercy to Israel. Always. Then most I say. Go to um, Psalms 103 verse 17 and 18. Psalms 103 verse 17 and verse 18. Psalms 103 17 and 18. Psalms 103 and 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The children of Israel. Pay attention. The children of Israel, his mercy will be what towards them for what? Forever. 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 Go to Ezra 3 and 11. Ezra chapter 3 verse 11. And they sang together by course and praising and giving thanks unto the Lord. Because he is good, for his mercy endureth forever towards Israel. His mercy endureth to who? Forever towards Israel. His mercy is forever towards Israel. Mercy is what? Compassion. It's one and the same. Go to Jude chapter 1. I'm reading one down. Jude 1. The book of Jude. Verse 1. Jude, the servant of Yahushua, Mashiach, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Yahushua, Mashiach, can call. Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. He said what? Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Content, Jude says, stand up for the laws of God. Teach Christ. Teach Yahushua. Teach Yahushua Mashiach. He said, teach it. For there are certain men, why? For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Yahushua because they want to live their lascivious lifestyles. You see that? I will therefore call them ungodly men. You see that? Crept in what? Unawares. You don't you know who you, you understand who it is they're dealing with. You need to pay attention. Because it's sitting down subtle, dormant. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, the children of Israel, Israelites, afterwards destroyed them that believed not, who went into sin. Uh, put them to death for violation of the law. And the angels which kept not their first estate, estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Satan and the fallen angels. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal uh, fire. So you see what anybody do, do likewise Sodom and Gomorrah? They were example, they were, they're going to burn, I'm going to burn them the same way, I'm going to burn them the same way that I can burn Sodom and Gomorrah, have you seen? Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. You see that? Yet Michael, like angel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuked you. That Michael said, the Lord rebuked you, get the hell away. <laughs> the devil want to take Moses, they're talking about, Michael said, get the hell away. But these speak evil of things which they know not. But what they know, naturally, as brute beasts in those things, they corrupt themselves. You see that? They're speaking again to the one Christ thought. You see that? They're maligning the men of God. They're maligning the prophets of God. The, but what? In the things that they what? Corrupt themselves in sin. They love to be sin. They're brute beasts. You see that? They, go to um, 1 Peter 2. <laughs> Why is he saying that? 1 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter 2 and 1. Sorry. Second Peter 2 and 1. But there, are, there were false prophets also among the people, even that there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So you see that they're keeping in sin. Sin. Evil fallen angels. You see that you, you see, pay attention. What word you have to tell the Pharisees? Every plant that with my father and the planted shall be what? Rooted up. They're not sent from the most high. Pay attention. So you sit down in these false um, Pharisee school in synagogues and the false vanguard school. You see that the most I say, they're not from me. I never send them. Pay attention. <laughs> because the teaching doctrine they're making what? What are they doing? Why do you know? We are just say by their fruits you're going to know, going to know them. Matthew 10 and, and 16. By their fruits, their actions, you're going to know them. Why? Go to 1 Peter 2 and 2. 2 Peter 2 and 2. And many shall follow their punishers way. They say they're going to have large followings. Pay attention. And the Pharisees, large followings. They pay attention. And many shall follow their punishers way. Vanguards, large followings. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. They're deceitful. You see that? 
they still blaspheming against the laws of God. And true covetousness, what? True covetousness, the love of money, wealth, and property, shall they be with feigned words or lying words make merchandise of you. They're making what? Merchandise of the people. You pay attention. The Pharisees were doing the same thing? Yes. Making marriage, <laughs> merchandise of the people, running for you. See that? The property, robbing the people of their property and their money and their wealth. Vanguard's doing the same thing? Same thing. Merchandise of the people. Money, money. Running a corporation, making money. Merchandise of the people. You pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. The Bible says it. Whose judgment now for of a long time lingered not, and their damnation slumbered not. Their judgment lingered not. The most I say, I would take them out. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, the laws of God, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, he called them the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned, with, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So whoever wanted to live as Sodom and Gomorrah, they're going to burn the same way, ashes the same way for them, and deliver just Lot. He delivered who? Lot and his family. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. So Moses said, I'm going to send prophets or angels or men to testify, or messengers to testify. They're going to be vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. The sin and the transgression and the deceit and craftiness of these evil angels, these fallen angels. You see that? For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So the men of God will be ticked off at the evils that the deceit and the craftiness of the devil have this, the turn of Israel and snare and they can't see the danger they're not seeing the danger they're just running blindly into them you see that? pay attention go back to um, Jude verse 10 but these speak evil of things which they know not but what they know naturally as brood beasts they are brood beasts and these things they corrupt themselves you see that? they love that warn to them for they have gone in the way of Cain they are what? gone in the way of Cain Satan and, uh, and run goodly after the error of Balaam for reward. Money, they love money, 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 money. You see that? They love money. And perishing against the sin of Cori. You see what? Look how the lay, lay, stick on uh, um, John chapter 2. Like we said, lay, lick on, <laughs> in the temple for what? Buying and selling. John chapter 2, verse 13. And the Jews passed over was at hand. And Yahushua went up to Jerusalem. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and changes of money set in. And when he had made a small a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured all the changes of money and he overdrew the tables for buying and selling. You see that? So if you run a corporation in the Mosai business, in the Mosai temple, the Mosai, we the Church of God, an organization, and you're running a corporation, you always say what? Buying and selling. That's a violation of God's laws. Mosai say what? You're a natural brute beast. The reward of what? Bela, for reward, money. And perishing again, sin of Cori. That's back to Jude verse 12, verse 12. These are spots in your feasts of charity. They are what? Of your brethren, spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. This is about me acquiring wealth, the acquisition of wealth, running a business on you. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withered, withered, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. They are meant to be destroyed. See that? Raging waves of the sea, forming out their own shame. Wandering stars, they what? Wandering stars, false prophets, false angels, fallen angels, evil angels, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. You see that? And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, that's why they tell you, don't read the book of Enoch. You see that? They are damned that you not read the book of Enoch. Why? Because it's going to expose who they are. You see that? Enoch testified them, saying what? The Lord come up with 10,000 of his saints. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all the hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These be murmurous complainers walking after their own lust. You see that? And their mouth speaketh great swelling words. You see that? Big and bright, sounding very eloquent. But what? But these are murmurous complainers walking after their own ungodly lust and their mouth speaketh great swelling words. Having men's personal ad admiration because of advantage. They have respect a person. You see that? Respect a person. You call them what? They are mockers. Mockers. How they told you that there will be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own God. Let's pretend. You see that? They're going out there looking grand and doing the work. Everybody said, that's the man of the Lord. That's the man of the Lord. He says, Jude said they are mockers. Pretenders. They are false prophets. Pretenders. Who should walk after their own ungodly lust? They're fulfilling their own lust. 
These be they who separate themselves, sensual having not the spirit. They don't have the spirit of the Most High. They don't have the spirit of Christ. You see that? That's why they do want Christ out. When man put t teach Christ in their false institutions and put them out. That we see it. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep the laws of the Most High God. That we see it. Keep the laws of the Most High God. Go to, um, the definition of the word. Go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and verse 3. Isaiah 14 verse 3. One, I read in verse 1 to 3. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. The Most High will have mercy on Jacob, you see that? The throne of Israel. And set them in their own land. Back to the, the land of Canaan. And the strangers shall be joined to them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them. Israel is going to take these hidden nations and bring them to the place. Means they're going to conquer everybody. This is the house of Mashiach. And the house of Israel shall possess them. Means own, own, own in the land of the Lord. Back in Canaan for servants, servitude. And handmaid servitude, you see that? They're going into captivity. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over the oppressors, who rule over you from 1780 to now. You see that? Who conquer you 1619? Who conquer you 1492? You see that? They are going to rule over this fourth beast kingdom. Take them captives. Pay attention. Pay it. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, and from thy fear, and from thy hard bondage, wherein thou was made to serve. The most is coming to show compassion on the children of Israel. I will have mercy on you still. I will have compassion on you still. Pay attention. Go to Sirach 36 and verse 1. Sirach 36, I read in 1 down. Sirach 36, 1. Have mercy upon us, O Lord God of all, and behold us, and send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. You see that? Sirach is saying, send the fear upon all them hidden nations that don't know you. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations, the hidden nations, and let them see thy power. You see that as thou was sanct sanctified in us before them, so be thou magnified among them before us. You see that? You, you deliver it to them. Come and deliver us out of their hand. Notice what the um, Sirach is saying. And let them know thee as we have known thee. We understand your wrath before our violation, but only thou, O God. Show new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Raise up indignation and poured wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Who conquer your people from 1780 to now? We see that? Gather you in 1619. We see that? Conquer in 1492 onwards. We see that? Pay attention. Most I say, bring wrath upon them. Destruction, sorrow. Make the time short. Remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful work. Remember the covenant that they keep with who? The children of Israel. You see that? Be Hebrews 8 and 8, 8 and 9. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Not according to the old covenant. You see that? That I made with their fathers. But I'm making a new covenant. The renewed covenant with the same Israelites. Hebrews 8 and verse 8 9. Pay attention. Most I say, remember them. Let him that escape be consumed by the rage of the fire. Back to Sirach 36 9. Let him that escape be consumed by the rage of the fire. And let them perish that oppress the people. That the oppressors who conquer from 78 to now. The most I say, Sirach said, let them perish. That oppress the, the, the children of Israel. Smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen. Who? He says, smite. The heads of the rulers of the heathen, take all these heathen nations, this fourth beast kingdom, take them down and all the, the, all the heathen nations that are oppressing the throne of Israel. And they say what? That say there is none other but we. They will say what? They are the gods. We are God. You see that? There is none, nothing. The Israelites have done away with it. Both say what? <laughs> Sirach say, smite them. Smite the heads and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say there is none other but we. He said, we have it. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together. He said, take down this beast kingdom and gather who? The tribes of Israel, the tribes of Jacob, the twelve tribes of Israel. And inherit thou them as from the beginning. Take us back home to Canaan. See that? O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name. And upon Israel. The children of Israel. The Israelites have mercy upon us. Are we saying? Have compassion. Mercy is compassion. Whom, shall thou, whom thou hast named thy firstborn. O be merciful unto Jerusalem. Thy holy city. The place of thy rest. The Israelites. You see what? Be merciful unto us. You see that? You see that? The definition of the word compassion. Sympathetic. Be sympathetic to us. Sympathetic consciousness of others distress together with a desire to alleviate it be conscious of our, our, seal, our distress with our the desire to what alleviate it or give us mercy or relief synonyms mercy pity sympathy kindness and charity so sir is saying have pity kindness mercy and charity towards the children of his world who is scattered for our sins you see that psalms 126 read verse 1 to 6 psalms 126 verse 1 to 6 because so you see what have compassion on the children of his world psalms 126 verse 1 to 6 Psalm 126 and 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, 
We were like them that dream. So we are telling, you see what? Smiting under the heads of the heathen, the rulers of the heathen. Take these heathen nations out and deliver, gather the tribes of Israel, the tribes of Jacob. Take us back home. But when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, the children of Israel, the Israelites that came out of Egypt, that they conquered under this fourth woman, this kingdom, just pay attention. We were like them that dream. You see that? It's like you was in a dream. It's like, it will be like you were in a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, you start laughing because they come in spiritual and height, they become spiritually heightened. And our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord had done great things for them. You see that? Because you'll be in your heaven and a spiritual, higher spiritual plane. You see that? Right among the heathen. Pay attention because you can be ruling over them again. You'll be back to reconcile with God. He will have compassion and mercy on you. The Lord had done great things for them. You see that? The Lord had done great things for us. Wherever we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. We, are so, we have been sowing in tears from 70 to now. You see that? Pay attention. We're going to what? Reap in joy. When you, you come back to the Lord's confess and forsake your sin, and your witches coming to get you. He that go forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. You see that? Bringing his sheaves with him. Go to Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. Romans chapter 13 verse 11. Romans 13 and verse 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake up to sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The compassion of God. He is about to deliver us. He says salvation is nearer than what? Nearer than when you believe. We awake from your what? From your sleep. Wake up your sleep and the children of Israel in the midst of sleep. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. What does he mean in the midst of sleep? 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Awake to what? Righteousness and sin not. What is the righteousness you're supposed to awake to? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all the commandments before the Lord our God as he had commanded us. Come back to the commandments of God. Come back to the commandments of God that we're talking about. Awake to righteousness. Come out of your sleep, your deep sleep or sin. And come back to the commandments of God. You see that? Awake means what? And sin not. Sleep is what? Sin. In the midst of sin. You're dead in sin. Dead in sin. So for some of what? Not the knowledge of God. Go to Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject it. The most I say, reject something, I will reject it. Thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. The knowledge you lack is the laws of God. That was um, Romans 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Say what? Awake to righteousness. Come back to the laws and commandments and sin not. Stop violating them. Or being asleep, for some have not the knowledge of God. They lack the laws and the commandments of God. I speak this to your shame. You see that Paul says, shameful, embarrassing. To your shame. You're in the midst of sin, you don't even understand. Go to Psalms 83. Psalms chapter 83, which was verse 1. Psalms 83 and 1. Psalms 83, verse 1. Keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not, be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. You see that? Angry gathering. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. So the heathen nations have taken crafty counsel against the throne of God, the, the Israelites. You see that? And consulted against thy hidden ones. They have hidden us. You see that? In plain sight, they're hidden. You don't know who you are. You're asleep. <laughs> you're still spiritually asleep. You lost your identity. You have lost your identity. Go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah 17 and 4. And thou even thyself, Jeremiah, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. He said, you and Jeremiah, you will even forget who you are. Jeremiah the great prophet, everybody forget who they are. Because of sin. Sin and transgression. Psalm, back to Psalms 83 and verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel, the hidden nations, against thy people. They are all in conspiracy. You see that? And consulted against thy hidden ones. They have hidden us in plain sight. Because you said they discontinue, take away a book from you. Take away laws from you, take away your nationality from you, and this, you see that reprogramming behind with lies and deceit and deception for violation of God's laws. You see that? All for violating God's laws. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation. You see that? Cut them off from the nationality that the name of Israel, the Israelites, may be no more in remembrance. They know, don't know who they are. You see that they're living as hidden in the earth. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against this one confront consent. They all in collusion. They all know who you are. They're fully aware of who you are, but they were keeping it behind them. The tabernacles of Edom. You see that Esau and his children, and the Ishmaelites. The Moab of Moab. Ishmael and his children. You see that 
Yes, my lover. Oh, Abraham, yeah, 12 princes. Yeah, and I give him filthy rich, make him filthy rich, give him wealth beyond capacity. He knows who you are also, the Ishmaelites. The Elamites know who you are, so the children of Esau. Pay attention. Moab, you see that? Moab, they know who you are, so the children of, of Lot. Pay attention. They know who you are, the proud one, and the Hagarines. You see that? They know who you are, Gibal and Ammon, and Amalek, and the Philistines, and the inhabitants of Tyre. All of them know who you are. As so also a journal to them. And they are hoping the children of Lot. You see that? All the children of Lot. They all know who you are. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera. You see that? What Jael do to Sisera? Drive a nail through your head. Um, David said, put them to death. Jael drive the nail right through Sisera's head into the ground. Pay attention. So David said, kill them all. <laughs> you see that? What Jael do to Sisera? She put them to death. David said, kill them all. And as to Jabin, at the brook of Kishon, which perished at Indah, they became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, Zeb. Yea, all their princes are Zeba and Zalmunna. Who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Northern kingdom, southern kingdom. Judah, Israel. You see that? The children of Israel, the twelve tribes that Husha keeps saying are coming for them. The five fishes and the two loaves, five to the ten. The ten northern tribes and the twelve baskets and fragments is the twelve tribes. The Hushas are coming for them from the beginning to the end. It's them are coming for. The hundred and forty-four thousand. You see that? The seven fishes and the seven loaves and the what? The four thousand men that get fed. The hundred and forty-four thousand are coming for them. Now they say it's them are coming to reach war for. Compassion. My compassion is towards them. Matthew 14 and um, um, Matthew 15. Them are, com them are coming for. Um, we go back to Psalms 83 and verse 12 who said let us take our, to ourselves the houses of God in possession Judah and Israel northern kingdom southern kingdom the divided kingdom of Israel conquer them in the earth and don't tell them who they are you see that pay attention oh my God make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind most I say make them as what stubble burn them up as the fire burneth a wood and as the flame set the mountains on fire so persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm most I say what Put them down to death. Take down this beast kingdom. That's why they take down Nebuchadnezzar. They take down the Medo Persian. They take down the Greeks. Take down this fourth Roman Empire. Take it down. Pay attention. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek their name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish. That men may know that thou whose name alone is who? Yahweh. You see that? At the old oh, Yahweh. Oh, at the most high over all the earth. You see that? So Jehovah, hey, pay, pay attention. He said Jehovah, Yahweh, Jehovah, Yehovah. Pay attention. <laughs> that the world, the world will know that you are the true, the one true living God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God Almighty. Pay attention. Go to Lamentations three and twenty-two. Lamentations chapter three, verse twenty-two. Lamentations three and twenty-two. It is of the Lord's mercies. That we are not consumed. The children of Israel. He says it's only the most high mercy that preserves me. That we are not consumed. What? Because his compassions fail not. The most high is what? Merciful and compassionate to the children of Israel forever. You see that? His, through his compassion, it will it never fail. It never fail. You see that? Jump to verse 32. But though he calls grief, though he what? He's kept away behind in of slavery for violation of his laws. Yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. Yet he's going to deliver us. He's going to send you a Go and get them. Go and get them. Go and get the train of Israel. Go and get them. You see that? I pray you get some understanding from today's class. God's compassion. God's compassion is what? The train of Israel. And he will what? It is of the Lord's mercy that he are not consumed. Lamentation 322. Because his compassion fail not towards the train of Israel. Shalom.